And we are live with the Den of Tools. I can't do a good entrance like uh, John. Howdy Howdy. And Justin Dow. Cheers, everybody. Trying to get to the chats. Thank you guys for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Um, so what are we talking about tonight? Tools. And can you guys still hear me? I got you. All right, you got me? No, I got you. My internet glitched when I, as soon as I tried to click on your <laughs> Everyone was like frozen up, and I was like, oh, no. I was it's just got... trying to the sign behind you. All right, you got me. You the sign? So Work Pro. That's awesome. Yeah. They're, uh, they're a nice little company. Where we were, we, I, I did suggest that he run for president, uh, at the very least, governor of his state, uh, considering the red, white, and blue in the background. Uh, still no answer from Neil on that one yet. I, I just don't think I have the, um, the know how. Well, like I said, st we, we still don't have an answer as of right now. So we're, <laughs> we're going to turn the mode over. <laughs> All right. I want to talk, um, cordless tools uh justin i know you're a fan of rigid and the den of tools i know you like harbor freight tools um i'm a little confused though on the hercules and bauer lineup only because it seems like the bauer is geared towards professionals but it seems like everyone who uses them the hercules is always on top i'm gonna give my two cents First, if that's okay, and yeah. then followed up by a video reference that's going to be posted this weekend. So my first thoughts from what I was talking with back and forth with the Harbor Freight employee and the specs on the sheet, uh, Bauer, let's just take, we'll pretend like that's the lowest line that Harbor Freight has as far as torque and as far as how cheap and affordable they are. Uh, and then Hercules is going to be about a $30 difference. And then Earthquake is going to be a little bit right around the same price range, if I'm not mistaken, DeBear can quote me, uh, as the Hercules lineup, but more geared towards mechanics and the Hercules uh, more geared towards the construction worker. But I've got a video with about four to six people that we just did a collaboration video discussing uh, who likes what is, and what their experience has been with the three cordless lineups from Harbor Freight. So I'll post that this weekend, but I'm gonna keep my answer at that and let DeBear put his two cents in on what he thinks. Well, first of all, I just want to say that um, I, I actually like rigid tools. I, in fact, when if you go back and you see my old stuff on here, I was using a ton of rigid tools. And sorry, I got a little echo there. And uh, so my my only issue with rigid has been uh, the company's uh, problem with standing behind some of their lifetime lifetime service agreement uh, warranties. Uh, and uh, as far as Harbor Freight. So they, they do the good, better, best. And the, the three-tier system, the bottom tier is actually the what used to be the drill master is becoming warrior. warrior. That's your average homeowner, you know, throw it in a kitchen drawer, small toolbox kind of guy. Then you have the guy who's like trying to get serious about doing stuff around the house or is a prosumer, maybe even a, a low-end entry level, uh, you know, beginner pro. And that's going to be Bauer. Bauer's like, think of, when you think of Bauer, think of like Ryobi, all right? Okay. And uh, Hercules is what they're trying to compete with directly against DeWalt in Milwaukee. That's their pro contractor tool. And uh, as far as Earthquake, Earthquake is, and, and, I, and I'll be the first one to say that I think it's weird that they didn't just incorporate Earthquake into Hercules. In fact, and I've also been the, the, the loudest advocate that they should have just put one battery line for everything. Because you know, it's not like everyone, anyone else does it. I mean, TTI, which owns... Milwaukee and Ryobi and makes rigid. They didn't do it. DeWalt, you know, it's owned by Stanley Black and Decker. They didn't do it. But Harbor Freight had a chance to really set the bar there and, and really kind of like corner the market, if you will. And uh, they, I wish they had, but they, they chose to go a different route. But anyway, that, that's the, the, the strategy is Hercules is for the contractor. Earthquake is for the, the automotive. Bauer is the, their version of Ryobi. And drill master is just for you know the average Joe. What I have seen from Bauer though is they are actually <clears throat> broadening their horizon as far as what types of cordless tools they have to offer for the prosumer, uh, as far as like 
leaf blowers. I think there's a hedge trimmer coming out or something like that. Plus, they have the vacuum. I mean, it seemed like they're uh, as cheap as they are. They and the color concept and the way it feels and everything. It seems like they would be like the Milwaukee option at Harbor Freight if Harbor Freight sold Milwaukee. Yeah, that's and like well, I, I know they have like jackhammers and stuff too. The Bauer lineup. Yeah, that that's weird. I I don't get the whole why the the Bauer line has all that other stuff associated with it. But if you look at Ryobi, Ryobi was the first line to really broaden and go outside of the shop, if you will. They started, you know, they're the ones who started doing the weed eaters first, the blowers first, the dust busters, the, even the garage door openers and all that stuff. Everyone else, you know, Rid, or uh, Milwaukee and all the other tools, those were all, uh, they came several years later in broadening their market. And they really only did it because of consumer demand saying, hey, I already have these battery lines. I want to keep using the batteries I bought from you and this other stuff. And they had to respond to consumer demand. So, I was going to say, I think the, th the first three that I saw that started to really stretch out was Craftsman, Cobalt, and Ryobi. I, I always liked Ryobi because they are an innovative type company. Even if some of the stuff's hit and miss, they definitely try to – and they hit homeowners hard. It's hard not to pick that lineup. With what they it, It's a good system. You know, it's – I've got you know very little against uh, Ryobi. I've had some Ryobi stuff just to try it, see what it's like. I didn't like the feel of some of their equipment. It it, it uh, I like the grill. I, th I think like the shop stuff, you know, like their their cheap table saws or even the miter saws. I would buy something better if you can afford it because those those are not great. But yeah. in, in terms of cordless tools, you know, I've been using cordless for a while once lithium ion batteries came out it like changed everything well that's what i was going to say so i had problems with the icad now i had dewalt and i was a huge dewalt fan for the longest time and i had the icad batteries which i had nothing but problems with when i went back to warranty out my kit which i did have a little bit of struggle and strife with with some of the management at home depot uh, go figure, you start asking about uh, what's the corporate telephone number they start singing a different tune and playing their flutes and whatnot so I had three options at the time, and the only three options that I had in the lithium lineup was Makita, Rigid, and uh, Milwaukee. I wasn't a huge fan of Milwaukee at the time. That was when they had their Gen 1 stuff. They had just come out. They did not really have, uh, in my opinion, the best contracting kit that I've seen. So I was really between Rigid and Makita at this point in time. Uh, Duelt was still on the iCAD system. Ryobi was still on the iCAD system. So I went with Rigid. And to be honest, I've had the same three batteries now for what uh, five or six years, and I mean, I haven't turned back. I haven't had to get new batteries. Most of the time, they sit on the shelf, but when I need them, they hold a charge, and they can hold it for half a day before I got to charge one battery. Yeah. Now, I will agree, though, uh, with the warranty thing. I have not had a chance to uh, exercise a lifetime warranty, but I always jump on there and try to register all my products. It did have a little bit of concern, but then I started thinking about it more and more. It's kind of like my uh, the Snap-on tools that I purchased. You even brought it up in the video recently, uh, DeBear. Warranty doesn't really mean a lot to me anymore, especially if a franchise or a company shuts off. It's kind of like the stock market. You put so much money, you invest so much money into it. What happens when they file bankruptcy or they're completely gone? You lose everything that you invested in it. That's kind of like it is for me with the Snap-on and Cornwell tools that I bought. I own a lot of Cornwell, and I own a fair amount of Snap-on, but unless I want to mail it in, which I don't really care to, I've got no one to warranty the stuff out with. So now instead of buying another Pro Series tool off of a tool truck uh, or shopping on Amazon and still having to deal with shipping, now I'm looking more towards Craftsman, Husky, Harbor Freight as far as my new line of professional sockets and people will disagree with me and say you can't use those in a professional environment yes you can oh, it's cool. super easy to warranty them out you know people have been using craftsmen for decades you know i i can tell you how many pros i know you go in the shop and they've got a craftsman toolbox they got all craftsman you know wrenches and, and sockets and stuff it's you know and even the old craftsman power tools 
man, up until recently, those things, I used those in a, in a tech environment for years. And we honestly had to step down because they kept taking the heads off of bolts. They were too powerful. <laughs> nice. I, I like the rigid lineup as well. I think the only thing, like everything works great. I just don't think, I mean, every year they run out a new impact and a new drill and a new gimmick. And yeah. that gets kind of tiring. Uh, they still sell the same exact plain stuff, plain Jane stuff. I haven't seen anything new from Home Depot for Rigid. I'm still seeing uh, Gen 5, which is what, a year or two outdated now. Yeah, it's been for a while. Yeah. But you got to remember, Rigid is just AEG rebranded. So it's the European tool system that they're rebranding for Emerson to sell here in the States. So they get they get the discount of doing, you know, uh, development for Europe and then just whatever works there, they bring over here. Um, now, Harbor Freight, uh, we were talking about Craftsman and Sears and stuff and their lineups. I mean, they are kind of like a young Sears in a way, the way they run the store, uh, branding, the, the warranty replacement stuff. Um, so they're getting better and bigger, right? Yeah, they're definitely expanding. Uh, I had noticed some similarities and some differences. They do sell some of the generic socket sets and whatnot still at Sears, but they sell a lot more of the specialty items like the DVLMs, the scan tools, the specialty pliers, the exhaust pullers, the pry bars and stuff like that. You go to Lowe's, you're going to expect their... They're still ramping up and gearing up. They're not sure what the consumer wants right now outside of uh, killer deals on like maybe because it's still a hardware store. I think they're gearing up more towards the construction side, but trying not to ignore the mechanic side. So they're pushing bigger packages together with sockets and everything. But you still are limited as far as uh, your specialty tools and pry bars. I haven't seen a lot of that incorporated at Lowe's yet. So you still almost have to go to both stores to see what you get. And then also Sears also still carries the gear wrench lineup. I didn't see a lot of gear wrench at Lowe's. So if you're looking for gear wrench stuff too, yeah, you kind of got to shop at both stores. That's kind of what made that Lowe's Home Depot thing kind of special when we did the video with Clay is that you almost kind of got to go to both. Okay. There's positives and there's cons to both. You know, there, you're always going to find something new and clever at one store that you didn't see at the other. You know what I mean? Well, you're just going to spend money. <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, you always go out with a wallet and then you come back and then you got mocks. So. <laughs> now, the, the problem I see with Sears and, you know, I, I'm an admitted craftsman fanboy from, you know, years back. And I always have that, that, uh, that sense of nostalgia every time I see a craftsman name, but they're like, so, you know, usually, you know, I guess except in the summer we're down in Vegas. That's a, town population of 2 million people, we're down to one Sears. And and they're even, that's even the store's half the size it used to be. It's, uh, you know, a lot of places don't even have a Sears. So you're either just shopping online or dealing with that. And on top of it, they're having serious issues with getting product because their credit rating is so bad right now. Manufacturers, because, you know, they don't make anything themselves. They're just like Harbor Freight and a lot of these other people. Uh, the manufacturers won't sell them stuff on credit, so they need to pay cash up front. So it can be a long time before you see uh, some items get restocked or even show up on store shelves. Yeah, yeah. They always try to outsource the best they can for the better price, and that's what that's what the customer is looking for anyways is the better price. You got a lot of people that have become Harbor Freight fans for many years as a result of their better pricing. So now they have a new uh, demon to basically go to battle with to figure out how they're going to win the customers back from having such poor quality throughout the what last 10 years now they're trying to come back so it's they have to really kind of reinvent themselves in my opinion well i, I think this was kind of i mean just from standing aback i think this was kind of their play um i don't think they knew sears was going to fold like it did but i mean they have a hell of an opportunity right now well, I think Sears is still going to go out of business. Yeah. Uh, I do think that Lowe's and like Ace, they're going to start as they start filling up. You got to remember the contract they had 
was supposed to be a seven-year contract where they negotiated. I forget who bought out. So there's another whoever owns Lowe's and Ace Hardware and things like that. They had bought out the the Craftsman contract. They were basically given seven years to. They had to pay a certain percentage of profit up to a certain point, and then from there on out, uh, they own it basically. So I don't think we're going to see an extreme amount of tools from Craftsman at Lowe's just yet. I think when that contract is finally over and expires and they can reap the benefits of wealth, that's when we're going to see more impact at Lowe's and no Sears. Well, they, they, so it was Stanley Black & Decker. They bought the Craftsman name. They bought the rights to it. Sears ret retained the right to manufacture under the Craftsman name for X amount of years. Uh, and then it's after that uh, that point is when uh, Sears loses that right, and then they just get a percentage of profits. I think it's something like 3.75 or something like that off of all sales from uh, the uh, from Stanley Black and Decker. And Stanley Black, I think they paid 900 plus million for it. So it was a pretty huge chunk of change. But the, I mean, they're trying to roll out as fast as they can. In fact, I don't know if you noticed, they actually sued Sears over the professional lineup that Sears came out with. Because Sears started running an advertisement saying, Sears, the real home of craftsmen. And uh, uh -huh. they were saying that Sears was trying to undercut the value of the name that they had sold. Right. I can see that. Which, knowing the guy who runs Sears is pretty much exactly what he did. Yeah, Eddie Lampier or whatever. Yeah, he's a, he's a scumbag. I don't know how he's not in jail, but they don't seem to care. That's See, oh, when, when you got money and lawyers... <laughs> Well, <laughs> so I actually want to talk to you about this bear a little bit is um, like I don't dislike I, I'm a big Stanley fan just from their older hand tools and stuff. And, you know, that Stanley, Black and Decker, Bostitch, Porter Cable, like they just they keep buying these like they know Craftsman has enough fanboys that they can invest in that lineup. They're going to make their money out of it, no problem. And they, they put DeWalt on the back burner. I'm not a DeWalt fan, but, you know, they just jump brands. Well, they still have a nice DeWalt selection at they, Lowe's. They do, but they don't, they don't like, <clears throat> like they're coming out, out with this 12-volt lineup. And I'm sure, Barry, you. Yeah, but now so, DeWalt has a 20-volt, so. So Stanley is. I, I don't honestly I wish I knew what they were doing. They they're basically they're just black and decker. All right. They they everything is based around that. And they built, you know, they, they brought in the DeWalt name because DeWalt made radial arm saws. This is the company that's DeWalt today is just a, a brand name, you know, slapped on higher end Stanley or uh, Black and uh, Decker. Black and Decker, the, their uh, trade series. You know, I've got one of the old trade series uh uh hammer drills and it, of course it's a beast but people wouldn't invest in it because they'd gone so cheap on so many things and so they had a little board meeting did some you know demographic studies and and they looked at the color wheel of tools and went oh yellow's not taken and uh and that's where they came out with dewalt and then they did the same thing with porter cable which used to be man porter cable was an icon in the industry everyone you know getting a, a porter cable you know, tool was you knew this thing was going to last, and then they they gutted that and, and made it a just a a, cl a clone mid level tool. It's like they took half of the Dewalt toolbox and half of the Black and Decker toolbox and mixed them together, came up with something in the middle, and then Black and Decker they relegated to their bottom basement. You know, this is what you buy your daughter for her first apartment kind of drill. What I what I still can't figure out is what they're going to do with Craftsman. I mean. They, they, it's like GM when GM had too many brands. You had, you know, Buick and Oldsmobile and Plymouth and not Plymouth. Um, what am I thinking of? Pontiac and right. and Chevy and uh, you know and Cadillac. I mean, where do all these people fit in? Oh, GMC and you know they had to pare it down and at Saturn. <laughs> yeah, it's Saturn and all this stuff. And so where where are they going to squeeze Craftsman in here? And if they do, because they they can't. They can't surpass DeWalt because they would undercut their DeWalt sales and their investment there, you know, marketing DeWalt as the you know best of the best. So what's going to happen to the poor people who have Porter Cable? Are they going to keep investing in Porter Cable? 
I don't think so. I, I couldn't see it. I mean, uh, I think it would be still that that same thing you said. Uh, good, better, best. I think those are your options. You know, uh, you'll be with good. Uh, if you're a home user, maybe it's Black and Decker. Um, better the, option would be Craftsman, and then best would be Dewalt, Porter Cable, and Porter Cable would fall in between. Um, better and best. The the only thing with the Craftsman lineup though is like, yeah, you could maybe. I mean. They are advertising it towards, I think, contractors because they have a cordless tile saw, a cordless miter saw. You know, stuff like that isn't really for a homeowner, you know? No, but a hobbyist, for sure. A homeowner that has a hobby. So, like my dad, for instance, uh, he works in the hospital. He's in the medical field. Uh, but he's a hobbyist at heart, so he does a lot of things with welding, carpentry, and construction, which is his background prior to working in the medical field. He was a, a general, basically general contractor, did a lot of things masonry-wise because his dad was a masoner, his brother's a masoner, and my dad was a framer and did all kinds of painting and everything else. So he knows his way around tools. So for him, it might not be a bad lineup because even as a hobbyist, you want something that's going to last, and that might be a good option for you. Well, it's and, and if you look back at the history of Craftsman, they did kind of – they were a whole good, better, best into themselves. They had a consumer level. They had the pro level. They, they were going after everybody. And it kind of seems like what they're doing now. Because if you look at that entry level of Craftsman Drill, there's no way that's aimed at a professional. But they're definitely aiming a lot of, like, you know, the, the new uh, power tools they're coming out with are definitely aimed at, at something better than, you know, maybe it's prosumer. Maybe that's, that's what they're doing. Because prosumer can leak over into the professional market as well. That's that's a good call right there. What I actually kind of miss from the Craftsman lineup, and I don't know if they're ever going to bring it back, and there's still probably a couple of air tools in this area, but uh, when I worked at Sears Auto Center back in 2010, 2012 era, they actually had for their good, better, best was Black & Decker was the cheap of the cheap. Then you had Gear Wrench, was what, which was in between cheap and and craftsmen and you had craftsmen and then you had the craftsman professional lineup where they actually said it's actually said craftsman professional yeah. on the side of the tool and you're like okay cool you go to the ratchet section that you had your craftsman ratchet which was square and bulky and cut into your hand then you had the pro edition which was smooth and it felt like a snap-on in your hand you know what i mean yeah Hey, speaking of which, and I just need to jump in here real quick. If you guys saw my 10 millimeter wrench comparison, uh, somebody caught that I had a typo. I'd given uh, Harbor Freight a, a a lesser value than it should have had. And actually, it changed a little bit of the ratings, and Husky dropped to second place tied with Tecton, and Gear Wrench actually won. And that's actually, that would not have surprised me as much as Husky winning, because with Gear Wrench, I was really surprised with the quality on that. I actually watched that video. I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing. I think I watched better than half of it, and then I had to get dressed for work and, and take off. But I had an idea going into it, and I'm like, you know, I love the concept that you did where you tested out various aspects of every single wrench to see what its max torque would be for the open end portion. However, I think a good follow-up video for you, and this is just my professional uh, recommendation, if you will, uh, in the automotive realm, you're never going to put that much torque behind an open end. It's just meant for lightly snugging. I think a better test would be which box end holds up before it rounds off. Because there's tolerance differences in the box end, and people will exercise the, the maximum strength and go beyond that by double wrenching it to see how much strength it can use to break off. So say you only have a tight area that you can fit a box end on, but you don't have enough strength in your hand to pull it, you'll see a lot of guys that'll throw the box end of another wrench on it and they'll sit there and reef on it to crack a bolt loose. What would be a good follow-up video is to do the same exact test with the same exact wrenches using the box end portion. I, you know, I thought about that and that's kind of how I did the whole thing with the impact uh, wrench there was just a test to see if we could get it to round off in there or do something. But... <laughs> So what I didn't want to do is, and no, no offense to the guys you work with, but my take on it is if you have to throw a cheater on there or, or a double wrench it or whatever, you're using the wrong tool. You know, at that point, if, if you can't get a if you can't get a, a longer box end, 
you know, get a or, or get a socket on, get a crow's foot in a breaker bar or something. You need to be using the right tool for the job. Uh, Agreed, but we don't always have that luxury. If you know, if, as far as like tight spaces and tolerance goes, because why I like to show the most extreme methods when it comes to abusing tools, so to speak. I might not abuse the open end portion as much as everybody else, but I will beat the heck out of the box end portion. I will use a hammer. I will smack on my wrench with a with a hammer, a big old four pound maul. I'll double box end wrench it. I'll take a piece of pipe and reap it. If that's the only thing that fits in that one area at the time, I will do everything that I can to crack that baby loose so I can finger it out. Yeah, well, no, I, I get it. And uh, that, you're right, that probably would be a good, a good follow up. So maybe we'll do something like that. I, I get a lot of good comments on it. Uh, I got some people who have some I interesting thoughts on physics that we need to correct. Uh, <laughs> people who think that changing the angle of the wrench changes the physics, and that's just. You know, it's basic, you know, geometry, but the uh, we're going to be uh, doing that. I've got some uh, actual stress uh, simulations, uh, stress simulations for box wrenches. I'm going to put into a video, but uh, actually for the open end, I mean, but yeah, that's a good idea. We should do the uh, follow up with the box end because that, that's I, a I think be great idea. anyway, if I can. Yeah. And, and you can use the same wrenches, same exact concept. Say, OK, now we're going to try the other end of things, you know. Always use your noggin there. Um, I just want to say hello to some people here. We got a uh, 4am caper, Jaron Wilson, Noah, Marcus, good love. If it's not broke, fix it. Kenneth, Brad's workbench, Dave Lawrence, me again, Dave, Jared, Milky Way, Dan, the bagel man. I just want to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, if anyone is a creator in here and don't know or whatever, you can put your channel into the chat as many times as you want. Yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for stopping by tonight's stream with me, DeBear, Neil. But 42 watching and 15 thumbs ups. I think we can do better than that. I swear to God it's free. Just go down, click it. Takes you all of two seconds. You're already watching. You might as well click it as you're opening your next beer. Come on. Let's get the thumbs up rolling. We got some great content going on tonight and three awesome people that share content with you. Just click it. It's free. What do you uh, th Thank you, Antonio, Claudio, Michael, for being here tonight. I apologize. I did not shout you out. Same with client graphics and duct tape tech. Sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> just trying to help you out, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know we can do better than that. 44 watching, just now 20. Come on, smash it. It's, it's, it's free, I swear. I mean, you guys like free stuff. You wouldn't cut the coupon out of the Harbor Freight catalog if you didn't want to go down to Harbor Freight and buy something and get something for free. Come on. It's free. Just click I, it. I got a funny question. You guys don't have to answer it, but I've never clicked a like on my own video. I don't know how you guys feel. I just feel weird. I about haven't clicked a like on my own video for the exception of the meetup. I did click the thumbs up on that because I had a great time. And I oh, said, yeah. you know what? If I didn't like it, why would anyone else like it? So I had to hit it. Sometimes, just to kind of help boost everybody up on live streams, and I know I don't save every live stream, I'll hit the thumbs up on the live stream just because. <laughs> I'll be honest. I always hit the like on my own videos because if I can't like my own video, then nobody else should. But the uh, my favorite part is the people who say, well, I'm, I gave this video a thumbs down. Truth is, YouTube doesn't care, man. They just yeah. want to see the interaction. So I'm like, you, you can thumbs down my videos all you want. Keep it but up. Negative comments, thumbs down. It's still an interaction. Yep. Yeah, true story. But, you know, uh, if I see a lot of thumbs down, there's only a couple of things I can see. One, either A, they didn't like something that I did, somebody that I had there, or they just wanted to be a tool for the day. I mean, there's just some people I can't, that I can't please everybody. But I am surprised yeah. sometimes when I post a video, I'm like, you know, I'll post it within minutes, and I'll get more thumbs downs than thumbs likes within the first couple minutes. And I'm like, really? I just posted it. You couldn't have even watched half of it, and you had to hit the thumbs up. You must really hate me, and you only love watching me to hate me. Well, what's scary about that is there's probably a guy that, like, as soon as your bell goes off, he goes over just to – that's how miserable he is. I did have one person say, I only hit the thumbs down because I wanted to be first, and there was no one there. And I was like, okay, fine. I understand. 
I got a few people like that. I think they're all uh, Milwaukee users. They they don't take my you know this company sucks videos very well. So I I gotta say like. I like Milwaukee tools. I just I'm embarrassed to use them because of the fanboyism. I I love Milwaukee tools. I've been a Milwaukee fanboy, fan bear, if you will. You know, my first the first power tool I bought when I was in the trades, I saved up and I was super excited. I bought myself a corded sawzall. This is back in the early nineties. I think it was, might might have been nineteen ninety, and uh, you know I was. I was super proud of that thing. And a story I like to tell, I cut a house in half with it one time. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, but I just, that's the thing I try to fight is the whole fanboy kind of concept. It's like, you just got to understand that, you know, just because it's the same color, the same brand, it doesn't mean it's the right tool for you for every job. You got to go with what works for you. I did, are you going to um, maybe jump into testing out some hyper tough that by any chance? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I I did actually last year. I tested out that when they first came out with it, I compared the hyper tough, uh, uh, was a twenty volt dr drill. Uh, driver to the Warrior and the Black and Decker. I remember that video. Yeah, and I've been meaning to do more of it. So, it, it, yeah, that's definitely coming probably when I get back to Vegas. They, I mean, they have a, a circ saw. They have, I mean, it seems like a all right little lineup. And I've used some of their drills and tests and stuff. And they actually, for homeowner use, it's hard to beat a thirty dollar drill or a twenty five dollar drill. Yeah, it's. I mean, and they've got a decent lineup. And they now they've got the yard tools to go with it. If you're just, you know, the average, you know, homeowner, and you got to, you know, install some stuff and put together some IKEA furniture. And oh my God, I don't know if you can hear the howling. <laughs> we got some, we got some neighbors around here of hounds, and every time a siren goes by, they have to, you know, sing the song of their people. Um, so the uh, we got the coyotes, and they like to yip it <laughs> nighttime after I throw food over the fence. They say don't feed the coyotes, but they're my dogs. They keep all the rabbits and the squirrels out of my yard. There you go. Okay, <laughs> I think they're 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 lots of fun, but the. Uh, no, the it, I think the you know Walmart's really onto something with that lineup. You know they already got people coming in the door for everything else. Why not also get them sucked into their power tool line? It's not bad. What about that? Uh, is it Bosch Bosch dish? Bosch dish. Like that? That's yeah. Stanley Black and Decker. I mean that that's in, that's in Walmart, and that, I thought that was their their pro level, and Hyper Tough was their yeah level. Well, Hyper Tough is their brand. Right. And Bostitch, as he said, is Stanley Black and Decker in house, and you know that's probably what they're doing. They're probably using that whole good, better, best with with that as well. But they they definitely want to get people onto the hyper stuff. I don't know. Have you seen? They've got hyper tough cabinets now. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've seen those too. Well, they're not like, cheap either. <laughs> I, I, I I still think, cheap, but they don't cost. Well, no, not much. I think it might have been your video or something. There, I know you both actually did a Walmart walkthrough, but um. I tried to do mine more like um, like a vacation style movie. That's that was kind of my goal. I was like, "Well, we're going to Wally World. Let's try to make this Chevy Chase as hell, you know." So I I had the wagon at the time frame. I was I just got done doing the radiator. I was getting ready to flip the car, and I was like, "It's going to be funny. How can I not go to Wally World in the wagon? Like this would be great." So I did. No, I think you know. You know, somebody asked me, you know, because I had a lot of people after you did the, Wal the, the the Walmart video, a lot of people asked me to do it, and I was talking to somebody else, and they were like, "Well, do you think that'll up, you know upset Justin because he's doing Walmart now?" Nah. I'm like, I, I'm like, I can't see I would. It's, it's only better for everybody if we all do it because if I do one, Mainz Man does one, and Brad's workbench does one, Brad will get it wrong like he normally does, but the uh, it's guys get to then see the different take from different points of view. And they're not going to watch just one. They want to see what everyone thinks about the different tools. I think it's a great way to do it. Yeah. Um, the only, only thing that led to that video to begin with, and I tell everybody all the time, like if you, if you see a gap where I don't do a video and then all of a sudden you see me banging out all these different videos, the subscribers and the comments is what drives the content. And I had at least six or 10 people telling me which stores to go to and they were saying hey do walmart i'm like really 
Walmart? I, I don't even. I never even really considered Walmart. Okay, fine. We'll check it out. And I'm like, how can I make this entertaining and funny and still have a good time while I'm doing it? So I really, if, if it was never asked, I would have never have done it, to be honest. <laughs> and yeah. if I have when people do a video, no, I was actually talking with Jesse from Gearheads about this the other day. He's like, hey, man, love the video on the whole Sacramento uh, law thing. You don't mind if I do one because I already kind of had it pre-planned, do you? And I'm like, man, you post content on whatever you want. I guarantee you I'm not the first person that's done a piece of content that somebody else has done. And I'm not going to be the last person. There's always going to be a million ideas and people that have different opinions about it. Run it. And as far as I know, it's one of his better videos from what he told me that he's done. And he's got a lot of traffic. I'm like, cool, brother, man. Hey, congrats. Yeah, that's, that's great. And also, like, uh, it's broke and fixed. Just said, you know, I wish he, he, we had to do. Uh, I can't talk tonight. Uh, would do World King or there was at least there was one in our area. And there, that's the stuff. World King, Menards. Princess oh yes, yeah, I, I don't have a Menards out here, so I can't no, go. You, know, you, you got Cal Ranch, don't you? Uh, if I do, I'd have to look it up because I've never heard of them. I've got that like Cal Ranch Supply, awesome. Builder Supply, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Ace, stuff like that. I pretty much hit every major store and auto parts store in my area in the Lower Desert. The only way I can hit other stores is to travel outside of my normal path and go like an hour or two hours away to find a spot. You got a tractor supply? Yeah, I did. I did one yeah. on that already. Did you? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I, I wore I think a cowboy hat for that one because, you know, it's tractor supply, so you have to look like a cowboy when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just go and be you. <laughs> I was, yeah, well, I, it, it was me. I had a great time with it, and I, and I made the best of it. I'm like, okay, I got this cowboy hat to do this video. It's going to be awesome. What else can I do with it? So I did like a triple A, AAA, like an emergency situation what do you carry with you? Everyone seemed to love that video. I'm out in the middle of a dry lake bed out where King of the Hammers was, and I like flop in the dirt, and I got this like eagle thing going on, and I got this crow sitting in the dirt staring at me, and I'm I'm trying to shoo at it like I'm getting ready to die. I'm trying to hitchhike. I, I thought it came together pretty good. A lot of people seem to like it pretty all right. Uh, I, was, I was gonna say the first um, getting back to the Walmart videos. The first one I saw was VCG Construction. Did that one of if it's like 12 o'clock and you need a tool in a pinch and they went into Walmart. So funny enough, I think they did like it it was like an hour long. I don't think they came out with anything. I don't think they made an actual decision. But uh it was I thought that was an awesome idea for a video. I myself have gone to Harbor Freight, or not Harbor Freight, I'm sorry, Walmart. It was late at night. I went in there to go buy, what was it, uh, beer and cigarettes. I came out to a dead battery. Oh. So I had to turn around and go back inside Walmart, buy a battery and a socket set to change the battery out in the parking lot. Now, needless to say, I think I gave the, the socket set away when I was done with it. But in a pinch, it worked. Cost me a little bit. Wasn't expecting to have a dead battery in the process, but it worked. No, I'm pretty sure I've got a Walmart socket set in the bottom of one of my cabinets or something because I was we were off somewhere and uh, my wife's girlfriend something happened to her car and you know she asked if I could fix it. I'm like, oh sure, I can fix it, but I didn't have any tools on me, so we just run to Walmart, grab, you know, drop you know 20 bucks and buy you know the basic tool sets that you need, and you know, boom, 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 we're done. And uh, of course, they, that's how you end up collecting all those odd tools around there like that. I try to well, carry more tools with me these days. <laughs> you did one at Target also, and it's kind of funny because maybe, <laughs> maybe I didn't even know Target sold tools. A few weeks before that, I was in there and I was like, I want to see if I can find the tool section. And I did, and like the prices, you will agree, Bear, are just ridiculous there. Oh yeah, <laughs> you, you don't go to tar Target's for I, I had like, never even looked at Target apartment. before. To be honest, I I never seen them. A Stanley tape measure, like their power lock, is sitting on the shelves for like twenty-five bucks. It's like a dollar a foot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the only place worse than that for buying tools is probably IKEA. <laughs> I don't think I could talk to people that buy IKEA tools. Well, yeah, see, that's, that's the thing. Uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to read one comment. 
I said at Justin Dow didn't even have a roadside kit. Shame, shame, shame. You know what, guys? <laughs> I got AAA, and I know the people that work at AAA. And as soon as they hear the I call, I'm like first up, man. They fucking ignore everybody else. Sorry for my French. Uh, they come out right to me, and I'm picked up within 30 minutes, and I'm good to go. <laughs> AAA is my friend, and I, I worked with all those guys for a year. So yeah, they they know who I am. They've been around. They've towed my toolboxes. And my beaters for years, they know who I am. <laughs> no, I was, I was just going to say that uh, I did a video even on Costco. A lot of people gave me a bunch of crap about that one. Like, who buys tools at Costco and stuff? Oh, Costco. I used to buy tools and a toolbox from Costco. My first toolbox was from Costco. They have some good deals from time to time. You know, I, I'm torn. Torn in. I'll go where the deal is. Have you ever seen the torn toolboxes? Yeah. That was one of my first toolbox. So I bought the carts to start off with from Harbor Freight. My first actual toolbox was a Torn, and it was a double stacker, and that thing was phenomenal. I have no idea why I got rid of it. I think I got rid of it because I didn't have the room, and I was moving to Southern California, and all I had was a truck and a teeny tiny trailer, and I had too many toolboxes at the time. I had too, too many at the time, so I, I got rid of the Torn, but, man, that was a phenomenal box. I loved that thing. I got a Sam's Club membership now. They don't sell hardly nothing. I wouldn't buy anything from Sam's Club. There's just nothing there. And I'm like, man, I wish I had a Costco membership again. But we've been with, uh, I say we, when I met my wife, she'd been with Sam's Club for over 20 years. So we got a premium membership. And I'm like, well, okay, I guess it's Sam's Club. Same stuff, diff, less tools. Yeah. Jared said he's just busting my uh, peanuts right on. <laughs> Uh, I also saw you did the dollar store tool video. Yeah, people were pretty jealous about my dollar store. I had no idea I had the deluxe dollar store near me. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any tools at the dollar store where we're at. We got 99 cent only, and uh, it's pretty much cooking apparel, snacks, and uh, you know holiday festival things like spinners and things to hang from your window. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a tool in there. Oh, toy section. You gotta yeah. love pulling like twenty or thirty bucks on toys for the kids so they can break them all in the same day and then throw them in the trash. So that's always fun. Do you guys ever go? Uh, do you have a true value out by you guys? Uh, yeah, I do have a true value down in the lower desert. <clears throat> it's okay. I don't think I've actually uh, done a walkthrough of true value, but uh, they just—they're a little bit limited. It's more of a, a nuts and bolts store, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, kind of like they throw them in. The, the not so great areas usually around me, but they're really handy when you're fixing stuff over there on houses. Yeah, we don't. I don't know if we have one in Vegas, but we've got one down the street from us here in uh, in uh, Montana. In fact, I was just down there the other day. I needed a. We had a a bad freeze and it killed our outside uh, water faucet, and uh, so I needed to run a hose real quick. So I was looking for one of those. We were like last minute on a Sunday thing, looking for one of those uh, kitchen uh, faucet adapters. Oh, and, yeah. them for, and sure enough, you know, True Value was, I got there with like five minutes to spare. And, you know, they had exactly what I need. And I way overpaid for it, but I got it. So they, they kind of see it like, I, I, like from looking at where they are and what they sell, they kind of know their, it's weird that they know their, their market, but it, it is a market. Of in desperate need. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, this little town, it's population like 8,000 here. This is Livingston, Montana. And we've got a True Value. We've got a Murdoch's, which is kind of like a tractor supply on steroids. Uh, we've got a big Ace Hardware. Uh, we've got an O'Reilly's, a Napa's, um, and a, a just a really killer local hardware store called Riverside and it's just like how many hardware stores can you fit into one town but you know everyone around here is pre pretty much in the trades or doing one thing or another working on farms so I mean we got a John Deere dealership right on Main Strip down here so we got all the fun toys we you know actually I have never done a, a store video but we have a Ace Hardware here that's inside a Giant Eagle that's actually amazing they have a ton of stuff I should do a video on that. Uh, Jason Reynolds says, Justin, you can't, you make it sound like AAA. It's 
for yourself a bunch of times you can't keep your car running well you know the way that the story goes the mechanic the mechanic's car is never fixed it's the or the last one fixed and uh i'm no different my main focus when i'm at work is to fix cars my main focus when i'm at home is to sleep <laughs> I, I agree 100 percent because i do maintenance repairs at work and i hate doing them at home they they pile up for me Oh, I'm, I'm sitting here not doing work right now talking to you guys. Guy yeah. has a huge list of stuff to do. How's that uh, that wood burner fireplace coming along? Oh, it's sitting there staring <laughs> at me. Are you going to have to end up redoing the whole shoot, or are you just cleaning it out? <coughs> uh, we're, I think we're going to have to uh, probably replace – well, most of the pipes we're going to replace, the exterior pipes – the stuff in the wall, we're just going to have to clean. It, it's getting in these walls. They're, they're 16 inch thick river stone uh, that's been, you know, been set since uh, 1890. There's no way we're digging into that wall. So that, that'd be a good test on the Bauer lineup. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, last year I used that that uh, Black and Decker uh, power hammer hammer jaw. I was talking about. I had to run a line for the security camera system we installed, and I had to run it through the through the brick and down in a corner, I had to, man, I had a big old auger bit on it and going to town working through that thing. It was a, it was a chore and a half, but it got it. It made it. Let me, let me ask you this to bear. Uh, you, you traveled from Vegas all the way to Montana with those two toolboxes. And I thought the video was great. My question was though, of the two, not just the durability, but of the two, have you picked a favorite yet, or are you still kind of looking at them, wondering like which one would be your favorite? Oh no, that, that's easy to, to pick the favorite between the two, and it's I I I can't believe it, but that uh, the cobalt is is uh, it's awesome. I mean, for the money, it's I you know I it it's got a ton of room. I love that kind of semi micro hutch at the top, the power strip, the that's the big thing is I like the easy access for putting my power tools and charging up there and the stuff I'm working on my projects. I can just put it up there and I can close it up and I don't have to worry about it. The Harbor Freight stuff, I mean, it's built like a tank. It, that, that blue cabinet is, you could you know hit it with a car and do more damage to the car. But it's that old school design and the top is like, you open it up and there's two inches of space in there where you can you know lay some hand tools, but you can't even, I'm 6'2", and I can't see in there that getting up on my toes. And so it's, it, it's almost useless. Uh, if I was doing like machine work where I needed a lot of small trays and that kind of stuff, then probably the Harbor Freight, but for general contract kind of stuff, you know, I got all my, my, uh, my Bauer outdoor stuff. I got the blower and chainsaw and the, uh, the hedge clipper all fit in the bottom drawer in the cobalt. So nice. I like it. Uh, Jared Milky Way says, Justin Dow, how do you watch the feed and not have feedback not wearing headphones? Uh, well, one, uh, I, if I understand the question correctly, one, I'm, I mute the YouTube video in the background but keep my Google Live uh, unmuted so I can hear the guys talk. Uh, two, I had to figure this out the hard way a few years ago because I'm uh, too poor to buy the fancy headphones and the microphone and all this weird stuff plus lighting and you know DSLR thing hooked up to the internet which I recently found out could cost you know, between three and ten grand I'm like yeah that's all well and good your boy doesn't make that gosh darn much to be able to afford to do all that fancy stuff so we're gonna buy a little tiny uh, Logitech camera and then hope for the best <laughs> Yeah, that um, Jaron Wilson asked about oscillating tools. Are they very that good? And are they are they that good? Um, me personally, I see myself now in a lot of instances where I used to use a sawzall. I'll use an oscillating tool just because of if you're cutting into a wall or something, whether it be plaster or you know drywall you can make the cleanest cuts so i i think they're a super handy tool to have 
Now, what's your when you, when, you, when you need them, you need them. What's your go-to tool in the maintenance uh, department, Neil? The hammer, an X driver, a drill, um, a handsaw. It'd be a hammer. Hammer. No, uh, uh, honestly, probably a ratcheting screwdriver, um, adjustable wrench, and that's about it. Some pliers. I would have thought, yeah, exactly. I would have thought for sure you would have said a cocking gun. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bear, uh, you're going to chime in on the oscillating tool. You, which you're talking about me or, or just, or, yeah, Justin? Uh, you, you, Bear. Um, yeah. Oscillating tools, are they yeah. worth it? Yeah, so I did a comparison on Austin tools. Uh, some company had sent me some some blades a while ago, and uh, I got into more since then. And you know, is as I said, it's a tool that in the past I haven't used as much as a lot of other stuff. Uh, but when you need it, it's like you said for doing plunge cuts. You get in that corner, squaring something off, and uh, you're know, trying to get some angles that you just can't get with something else. They're they're really useful for. Also, I found for like extracting some stuff, like people talk about, like I've got this, you know, some guy on, on some form was like, there was nut, I can't get off. I've tried everything. What do I do? I'm like, take take an oscillating tool to it. You know, just cut the sucker right in half. Yeah. And, um, the oscillating tool kind of replaced this. This to me is kind of pretty much obsolete because of it. Replace what? Um, oh, there. Yeah. You know, I used to do one of those back in the day when I did uh, IT kind of stuff. We'd use those to do quick plunge cuts to put in uh, uh, socket ports and walls, you know, running uh, Cat5 kind of stuff. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, you know what I love more than that these days for that kind of stuff is there's a kit you can buy from uh, who, who makes all the, I forgot the name, makes all the, the wall sockets and stuff, the ports. It's. Um, uh -huh. Not uh, Land Tech. Makita? Yeah, no, you're right. Land Tech. Yeah. yeah. The, um, so they make one that's made for a five-inch hole. So you just go in with a five-inch hole saw, boom, in and out, it snaps right into that hole, locks into place. It's super easy. They, if, that's that's kind of cool because, like, I was doing – um, I was running some uh, – outlets and stuff in, in an old house I was remodeling and I was trying to run the electrical in the bathroom and I had to go about five feet but I had no clue how to do it without taking the walls down the guy goes if you go to Home Depot they make like five foot Klein bits that you stick in your drill and you know sure enough I grabbed one got over to where I needed to I missed some knob and tubing by like a hair <laughs> But uh, we got there. We got it done. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there that like I still don't know about that I'm learning. Now, the bear went with the house up in uh, Montana. Was that more of a vacation home or a rental? And then, depending on what it was, uh, when you go up there, how much time are you actually spending on like uh, maintaining or uh, refurbishing? the house itself when you're up there well yeah thanks for bringing that up um <laughs> sorry i just wanted to know as i'm no, thinking no. about getting like a quadruplex or a duplex within the next three years i was just want to know what i'm going to get myself into first so this is this house is the fourth oldest house in the state it was built in 1890 it was originally the blacksmith for the railroad and then it was the print shop for the newspaper and then it was like the Pony Express station and all this other stuff. It's old. It, 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 it's, you, I'll have to show you some of the photos we have from back in the 1800s. It's, it's been through the ringer up here. And my wife's father bought it 30 years ago. And he was a master carpenter. And, you know, just like you said, you know, he went out and he did it to make the money. And when he got home, he just wanted to sit back, have a beer, watch a movie, read a book, and relax. 
And so it's got a lot of, you know, as they like to say in the, the market, deferred maintenance. And it's, uh, we got all sorts of stuff to do up here. And we had planned to be doing more of it. Last year, we did a bunch. We did some general maintenance, you know, with a lot of stuff, guard stuff, just cleaning it up after winter kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we own it outright. There's no payments on it or anything like that. So we're real lucky when it comes to that. Um, and it's, uh, what we're in a, we're in a tight situation right now because the house we were in in Vegas was a rental and the owner decided to sell right as we were coming up here to Montana for the summer. So right now we're in a situation where we need to be back in Vegas come August and we don't have a place to live. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. And the market in Vegas is so screwy right now and prices are high and whatnot. And there's so many scam artists out there. So trying to find a rental, uh, you know, house in Vegas when you're not when you're not there, it's some tricky business. So so why not um, why not purchase a house on the outskirts of Vegas? And if need be, uh, refinance to cover the down payment uh, going into it. Well, because buy a, house, buy a house on the outskirts of Vegas. Because I'm a professional YouTuber these days, and uh, okay. banks don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> so I understand. They want me to have a couple more years of doing this before they're willing to uh, finance us. We we did talk to some banks, and uh, you know it was. It was rough because we went from a situation where, you know, we could get a loan anywhere we wanted to, you know, credit card companies being like, well, we're, we think we're going to close your account because your finances are, are more unstable. And, and it's true. I, I don't blame them. It, it's, you know, it's basically it's a small business. Sorry, the whole family just got home and the floors here are super squeaky and they're walking all over the place being as squeaky as they can. I can't, hear um, yeah, I can't hear anything either. Um, does you know, does it work? Does she have a job down there? And what what would drive you back to Vegas then? Like, as a full time YouTuber, if no one else is working uh, hypothetically uh, down there in Vegas, what would be the point in going back? Uh, so my oldest, my oldest son is I is my my son through a previous marriage, and she lives in Vegas, and I have 50 50 custody. So if we stayed up here, I wouldn't be only, only able only to see him like over Christmas break and over the summer, and I'm not going to be that kind of dad. So right. it's, that's what, that's the way my dad was. And, you know, basically he took off and I barely ever saw him. And then you know, by the time I was a teenager, he just didn't want to have any, you know, he had another family that didn't want to have anything to do with me. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to go that route. And so I'm definitely in that realm uh, at right now, as we speak, I haven't seen my other kids either since I've moved back to Southern California. I'm not trying to be that dad, but I can't afford to be any better than I am. So I understand where you're coming from there. Well, I'm sorry, man. And no judgment. I mean, you do what you got to no, do. No, I understand. Yeah. My, my dad made a choice. There, He didn't have to do that. He he made a conscious choice. His his wife made him make that choice because he was, you know. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. My, my cubs are around here. They don't need to hear that story. But the uh, point of the matter is that, you know, we're, you know, we're in that situation. But we're... So we're not doing as much maintenance right now because we are trying to hold on to the funds that we have because we're not sure how much we're going to need. So we're hoping to secure something here in this next week. Then once we do that, we're going to be, uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff. I need to redo the the deck out back, all the supports underneath the deck. Uh, we've got um, a, a roof that I want to, we've got interlocking shingles I need to scrape off and we're going to put a, a, a tin sheet roof on, you know, for those winters. So we got we got lots of stuff to do. If you're bored, you can come on up for the weekend. That'd be awesome. But my my uncle actually owns property in Deer Lodge. Oh, really? Deer Lodge is awesome, man. There's I haven't been up there in about 15, 20 years, but yeah, it was nice when I was there. Yeah, I recommend everybody get a chance if you get a chance to come up to the Montana Idaho area. You Butte know, is a Butte is a Butte. I did enjoy hiking and camping and fishing in Butte. Yeah, we were there last weekend, man. Home of Evil Knievel. My, my brother, what, he moved out to California after college, and uh, when he drove out there, I think it was Montana, he said you when you go through the state, you just you see a mountain in the distance, and you just never get it on the first day. You never get to it. That is actually true, and maybe in different ways. 
Arizona. So we're I am driving from the East Coast to the West Coast. I went from Virginia through up and through Pennsylvania, Ohio, and all the way over to Oregon to move. And the longest state, I mean, I, I swear to God, it was Ohio, this, that, the other, Wisconsin. Next thing you know, I'm in Montana. And Montana, it seemed like it took me a whole day to get That's through funny. Montana. But there's but a there's a hell of a distance. A couple of hours at a time. I was like, man, this state's small. I couldn't believe how small some of the stuff was. Delaware was really small. I was like, hi, welcome to Delaware. An hour later, bye. You're now <laughs> in some other state. And I'm like, well, that was fast. <laughs> I, I had enough time to pull over, grab gas, and buy a, a coffee mug. <laughs> yeah, the only state, other state like that is like Texas, you know. California, if you're driving north south, it can seem long, but you know that you know turning you turn east and two hours later you're in a different state. Montana is like anywhere you want to go, it's a day trip at least. Oh yeah. Florida I mean, even California, like when I went from Oregon down to California, and I remember I was when I was younger, uh, granted, there might have been some speeding when I was younger. <laughs> I was able to make it all the way down here in one shot within like twelve hours. Uh as an adult, I got into Sacramento, started falling asleep, somehow went through Sacramento, had no idea that I had fallen asleep, but was still on the road, pulled over for a nap, and then a couple of days later, yeah, I ended up down here in Southern California. <laughs> I'm glad you woke up from that nap. Oh, man, me too. And I can't <laughs> believe I was still driving straight down the freeway. That was a, that was a shocker to me too. <laughs> Did you ever see that video of the guy in the uh... – um, Tesla that's like asleep in traffic. <laughs> I have not seen that video, but it sounds like something that I might have done. <laughs> you, can, you can YouTube it. The car's driving and he's just. Oh, is it the new self driving car thing that they got going on? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you know, people often ask me because I actually did some work with Tesla and people would say, like, well, I'd never want to have a, a self driving car. I'm like, you've never had to commute to work. That's right. That's well, the truth. Yeah. I was talking with someone yesterday, and I, I know like self-driving cars are out there. They're a thing. There's two things I think of, though. I think car companies, I don't know how they could take that liability. And number two, if they were going to break into actually doing it, maybe they would have like a turnpike or highway mode to start off before it gets into like a city drive mode. Well, they first started off with, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Mercedes that start, first started playing with it. They had self-parking cars. And Mercedes would actually, had a button you'd push, and it would know how to park itself in a uh, parallel parking situation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, nowadays, I mean, the thing is, it's all about futuristically thinking. If you're not thinking how to make the next big thing, your company is going to fall wayside because the first person that creates a successful self-driving car is the company that's going to make the most money. The yeah. company that decides not to, they're going to be laying to the wayside. Yeah, it, it's that first mover status they call it. You know, be the first, be the best, keep innovating. And if you can do that, you know, a lot of people are like worried, like, oh, if I do, do this, I need a patent. Don't worry about patents, man. If you get a good idea, get it to market and keep and you know capture that market and then just keep innovating and by the time people you know try to catch up you're already on to the next thing and and that's what tesla is trying to do man it, it's you know they've got they came out with this little sportster then they came out with this dan then they came with the suv and now they get the pickup truck coming and you know i love everything electrical i love you know dealing with electrical motors i play around with e-bike e-scooter kind of stuff then you know a lot of car guys say well i need it to be loud and stuff i'm like that's great, but man, I love torque. That's that's my that's my juice right there. And I, I want to hit that pedal and go. Yeah, and, and I think actually Tesla's big play will probably be the trucking industry. Oh, self-driving two, three, you know, trailer trucks. Yeah. Yeah, the Teamsters is going to have a fit. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, if it's not broken, uh, don't fix it or what have you. Uh, it says, did you see the new VW? van the new one no i have not seen the new vw van but i will tell you this uh it's a chrysler baby <laughs> when i was working at chrysler we had a vw rutan that came in 
that thing had a 3.6 it had all the same stuff it was bumper to bumper the same exact thing for the exception that it had a vw symbol so when i think vw i think couldn't be much more harder than a chrysler well, they, you know, Volkswagen's great at capturing the marketing kind of stuff, and yeah. like they did with the bug. And yeah, you know, I've seen the pictures of the, of the new, you know, microbus, and I'm old enough to remember the old, you know, microbuses from the 60s and 70s. And I, I got to admit, having a soft spot for them. And I think a lot of guys are down on uh, on minivans. And you know, when I was in my early 20s, I had a Dodge, no, Plymouth uh, Voyager. 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 And, yeah, had no kids. You know, just me and and the wife. And we took out the middle seat, made this big area in the center, and we drive all. I was living in Indiana at the time, but we drive up to Lake Michigan and do the whole. You know, we drive up and down the whole lake and stop at the beach and just open up the side there and be able to just hang out in it and stuff. And then during the week, I used it to haul tools around in. Yeah, they're moving up and they're great you know. vehicles. I will say, vans today are not like the vans that I knew growing up. Now, when I was growing up, my uncle, I swear to God, he had the shagging wagon, man. This thing was freaking cool. He had a Chevy van that had, you know, the little, you seen from the A-Team, they had a little bubble in the back and everything. Yeah. Sliding door. He had a full-size bed in the back of this thing with a mini refrigerator in the front. And I swear to God, he used to take me and my cousins around all over the place if we got tired we just nap in the bed. We'd be playing with our toys back there, unbuckled, just having a great time. You know what I mean? And and there was always food and drinks inside there. He'd take us to the beach. We'd have a great time, come back into the van, but he'd drive us back. And I was like, they don't do that anymore. Nowadays, people, doesn't matter if it's a van or a car, but specifically vans, these things, I swear to God, you never smelt the smells that I've had to smell in the last few years of being at the independent shop of some of these hippies like i know a hippie when i smell it now <laughs> oh, i get yeah. in the car they got all this lavender and all this weird oh, they call that uh, whatnot. And i'm like i get in there and it just smells like a sweat box and i'm like ah, ah, ah. i'm gonna throw up you know what i mean uh jared milky way says i have an idea to do a youtube vid doing impressions of tool tubers would y'all be cool just not busting. Yeah, I'd be down with that. I mean, I don't consider myself a YouTuber yet. <laughs> well, I'm still a small channel. I enjoy the people that I have. I have done impressions before that I thought would take off, and they never did. So I kind of like, oh, okay, well, maybe we'll play with that a little bit later on. I did a John Wick thing, and uh, – I would have thought a lot of people would have enjoyed that, but uh, to my surprise, not that many people liked it or they didn't watch it. I thought it was clever. I liked it. <laughs> I was going to say, I, tr I, I literally watched that whole scene from front to finish, and I copied every single scene. I, I would watch it. I'd pause it. I'd do the clip. I'd press play. I'd watch the next clip, pause it, go back to the other guy, and I would go back and forth until I had the whole thing. Thing took me like three or four hours to do total from start to finish and upload time. No, I thought it was good. And as far as you know, people do a parody to me. I yeah, go for it, man. Have fun. I've I actually, have no idea even where to begin. I mean, you got the animated bear, and I'm like, yeah, that's <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually thought about doing that exact same thing, having some fun with some of the other. You know uh, the other YouTubers out there. I might do it myself. So yeah, go for it. I have a question. With, you, with your bear, are you able to put a paw in the air or no? I mean, can I put my paws in the air, wave them like oh. I just don't care? Okay. So it would be really funny as if you did an impression of me opening a beer with your paws. <laughs> I don't. I don't quite have that kind of. <laughs> Uh, there's kind of a way I could do it. I'd have to if practice. You, if you get to that level, let me know because I would be laughing hysterically because that would be awesome. <laughs> I'd like to see you do like a, like an AVE. Yeah. With the bear pause. Pause. Just the pause. <laughs> Camera I pause. Just... I got to be honest. I'm not like a huge fan. Someone said that I thought that they thought I was trying to pretend like I was AVE. I had no idea who he was. I went and saw his video, and I'm like, 
I just couldn't get invested into it. It wasn't something for me. All I saw was his hands. And I thought I cussed a lot. This guy seems like he cusses a lot more. And I was like, I'm sorry. You lost me. I, I, I don't know a face. I don't see a face. And cussing with hand signals. I, I don't know. It's it's like watching a mute using sign language and just flipping you off the entire time. It was it was I, I couldn't get into it. I watched him when he first got started. I was I was a big fan, and but he really just turned into the whole like you know he, he had a lot of these as I call them the tool bros who you know they're the same guys who are like the Milwaukee fanboys. They can't think for themselves. They want to like you know everything has to be what's cool and what's down. If you don't if you're not in with what they're in, you're you know a frippin' idiot or something. And he just really bought into, I think it was, they were the ones who were like supporting him on Patreon and stuff. And, uh, you know, these days he makes over 80 grand a month off of Patreon. And so he's got to appeal to that crowd. And I think he's really bought into it. And the cursing just went way up and just kept a lot of the craziness. And I was like, I, I'm just done. I don't care about the. I mean, I get it. I, I curse thing, but, too, but. Yeah, but he doesn't. I never doesn't noticed like, it. Come on. You've been in the shop where you got the new guy who's there and he's trying to pretend like he's like one of the old dudes and he starts like cursing up a storm at, at times where it's not like it doesn't you don't need it and you're like you're you're trying too hard. And that's what I feel like A V E feels like to me. He feels like the guy in the work site who's trying too hard to act like he's an old salt and he really isn't. And maybe he is, but it kind of, that's the way it comes across to me. Yeah. And then the funny thing is, all the people I get who come over from his channel to give me hate, who say I'm hiding behind the bear. I'm like, your ABE fanboys, the dude never shows his face. You can see my face at least once a week on the channel. Every Saturday. Yeah. That, that is one thing about AVE that I've, like, so when I started my channel, the first whatever videos is in my head, I was like, I want, I'm reviewing tools. I want people to see who I am. And not just trying to bullshit people. And um, he never shows his face. All right. Honesty card. You're running up. When I very first started my channel, now granted, I've gone through this a couple of times, but my original channel, the channel we're on again now, when I first started my channel six years ago, uh, when I created a YouTube account slash channel, I used my real name because that was my real name. I had no idea that YouTube was a thing. I didn't know that you can get paid for it. I didn't know how the whole thing worked. All I know is I had to watch like seven to ten videos in order to find one answer. So I thought, hey, if I if I decide to record some videos, maybe I take these seven to ten video ideas plus what it is that I know from going to uh, community college and learning about automotive and what did I do in the real world. I put it all together in a video. Maybe it'll be helpful to somebody because they don't have to watch seven to ten videos to find the one answer they're looking for. Maybe they can just watch the one video and they get what they need out of it. So that's what really started my whole channel, reason why I ran with my real name. And I told everyone else a long time ago, I'm like, you know what? It would have been nice, I guess, if I would have come up with something catchy. Maybe my channel would have done better, this, that, and the other. But to be honest, uh, I don't know if I would change it at this point. You know, I'm having a good time. I meeting a lot of real people and having a great time. I don't have a, a special thing that I do. And uh, some people like me. Some people pass me. Some people do better than I do. Some people do uh, not as good as I do. And I'm like, look, I don't know. I, I do it for fun. It's a hobby thing. I don't focus on it because I'm more focused at work. I know what I make at work. I know what I make in the military. Those are my main two focuses. YouTube's kind of like a back burner kind of thing. I have fun with it. I tr I do it every day or every other day or whenever I can afford to do it. I'm like, well, I got something super fun to talk about. I need to express myself in some way. So YouTube is my hobby. And I'm like, well, I want to share with people and see what they think. And then I, I jump on here and I do a video. So it's not that I, I'm trying to crush it. It's just, hey, I've got this idea. And if I don't get it out, uh, I'm going to forget about it. So I, I do the video. No, it's, I mean, that's what I did when I got started. I've been doing it next month. It'll be four years. But like the first year I did, I think three or four videos. I, I and then I, I did, and that was between August and September. And then I took like eight months off. And then I did like six or seven videos. I took another six months off. 
it took me a long time to get to the point where I was posting regularly. And, uh, you know, I, I worked in the trades, you know, when I was younger. And then I, I, I got sucked into the whole tech industry and stuff. And the, uh, you know, this was a way for me to get back into the stuff that I, I was really passionate about that I, I really liked. You know, I, the, the tech thing just kind of was one thing after another and I just fell into. And the, uh, and it was a way because I think I saw people out there who were like bad mouthing, you know, certain tools that I had that I was like, this is actually not a bad tool for your average DIYer. You know, you just need to know how to use the tool right. And, you know, that's how I got started. I think there's a lot of you guys out there, probably a lot of people in the comments section. I, in fact, I know a lot of my viewers who got started for me just talking to them. You know, it's a great way to get those, those things that are bouncing around in your head, just get them out there, you know, for other people to understand because you think, well, there's no one else out there who wants to listen to what I got to say. There's 8 million people on the planet. There's people who want to know, oh, yeah. who don't know as much as you. You may think, well, I don't know everything. Yeah, but you know more than a lot of people. And if you can communicate to those people how to do X, Y, and Z, that's a service. I mean, and they, they want to see it. Yeah, I mean, I think I – on one of your Saturday streams there, Bear, um, you're talking about if you're making YouTube videos, like try and get one out a day. Just keep cranking them out, and it's kind of the approach I've taken. Well, and another thing I, I was talking with uh, Neil about, too, was uh, <clears throat> I've had various steps when it comes to, uh, like, the YouTube content that I've been creating over the course of, what, six years plus now. In the beginning, it was the occasional video, which then led to live streams, which I had no idea what I was doing. I had some help. I figured out how to do the live streams. Then I was like live streams all the time. So everyone knew me for my live streams. Then I kind of got away from that. I went back to doing videos again. Then I started slowly bringing on some live streams from time to time just to kind of hang out, get some extra opinions, or just shoot the shit. Sorry, pardon my French. Have some fun listen to music, etc. Uh, but I told Neil, I'm like, dude, uh, from what I know from your channel, I've watched a couple of your videos, but I'm more engaged in your live streams because I love hanging out. I love drinking beer. I love the fact that I don't have to be the quote unquote center of attention. I love the fact that I can just sit here, watch you talk shop and I can hang out, drink beer and not have to say nothing. If I want to say something, I could put it in the chats and still chill so right now, I feel like Neil's channel is like the main source for my entertainment when it comes to live streams. So I count on him at least a few times a week. I'm like, I don't, if you do it a few times a week, I'm satisfied. You know, if you only do it one time a week, fine. I'm still going to be there. Same thing with the bear. I don't ever intentionally try to go live on Saturday because I'm always trying to be on your channel or, uh, you know, whoever else goes live on Friday night. Uh, I'd rather somebody else go live and me just hang out. That That's me. I like hanging out in the waistline, just drinking beer and watching and hanging out. I'd rather do that than be live. It doesn't mean that I don't like doing lives. It's just that uh, when I do them, I'd like to have something interesting to talk about. If I don't have anything interesting to talk about, I don't want to hang out. I just want to just chill. So. Yeah. You know, I honestly didn't like doing the live streams. And that's another thing where the audience, you know, the viewers were like, man, we want to see live streams. We want to see live streams. And so I started doing them. And that was pretty much earlier this year where I really got into it. And then, you know, we, we had, I do an hour or so. And then the missus joined me. Next thing I know, we're doing four hour live streams every Saturday night. And you think like, well, how do you sit there and talk for four hours? But it's it's just feeding off of you know whatever in, in the chat is saying, and it just keeps going and going and, and the, the night just flies by. It's a great time. We look forward to it every week. Well, and what I like about your live streams too is that, and I don't know how it works because you got some new creative where you've been you've been exercising it. You're like, hey, we're getting ready to review this item. Money's a little bit tight. If you'd like us to review it, throw a little donation up. And I'm like. Hell yeah, I, I want to see that. So I'll throw, you know, whatever I can afford. $1, $5, $10, $20, whatever I can afford at the time. Because I, I, I'm like, yeah, I, I want to see that because I'm thinking about buying it. And for me, it's worth the review. If I got to shoot you a couple of bucks and everyone else shoots you a couple of bucks, I'm like, then we get a video and you do a full review on it, which your reviews are awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. 
So he thinks it's cool, it's a good tool, or it's a good toolbox. Now he's got me thinking. Now I might actually consider going after it because I've watched a handful of other reviews. And, you know, I like real tool reviews. He's okay, but he goes a little bit too involved. And I'm like, it's just not practical. I mean, you're doing things with the items, but it's not in a practical environment. I want to see a more practical approach when it comes to a review. Show me the practicality. If it's there, I'm hip. I'm in. I'm watching. I'm innovative. I'll donate. You know, that's what I want to do. There's two channels I count on for reviews anymore. It's the Den of Tools and I, f I forget the other one, Workshop Addict, maybe. Yeah. With the two older guys that have the side by sides and stuff, is that is that the proper channel, Workshop Attic? Yeah, I've chatted with those guys. They're nice guys. They're really nice. Did they take apart the skill saw AVE style? Is yes. Yeah. Okay. So those are the other. So your channel and those guys are about the only big channels. For tool reviews, I, I depend on because I don't think they BS anyone. I don't think you do either. It, you know, the, the worst thing that I do is I'm highly optimistic about a tool. And I'll say, I, you know, my view is that every tool has a job that it can do. And if you can't find that job, then you're just not being creative enough. Even if that job is as a doorstop, you know, it it's, you know, like, like the stuff from Dollar Tree, you know, well, I'm not going to, you know, guys like I'd never buy a screwdriver from Dollar Tree. I'm like, I've had a lot of cases where I've had to make specialty tools. Like I got into doing my own gunsmithing and stuff. And I went to Dollar Tree and, and bought a set of screwdrivers so I could, you know, chisel special points into them and bend them at a, at a right angle so I could make this, you know, specialty tool for holding back, you know, a rear sear spring while I'm inserting, you know, this other part. And, you know, that's, to me, that's the point of the of Dollar Tree tools is because I can hack them and do something else with them and save my good tools for something else. So that I think that's a lot of people take that as me being, you know, just not saying anything negative about tools. I'm just always trying to find where here's how you can use this. Here's a practical use for this tool. All right. So Mason Webb says no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram, only interwebs on YouTube. A lot of people agree with him here. And, you know, I said it before in the past. I'm like, why would you ever want to follow me on multiple social media websites? But I will throw this out there. Facebook, I don't post as much. Most of the Facebook posts that I have, they're like, okay, now this is where it gets a little derogatory. I post a lot of funny memes. Most of them are sexual in nature or adult graphic content, which I find to be hilarious. And then other ones I share via Instagram because it says, do you want to share it to Facebook? And I'm like, yeah, sure. What I like about Instagram is that I can film up to one minute of film time or take a picture of whatever it is that I'm working on that day and then share it and it shares it to both. So for me, I do a lot on Instagram. And I do a lot on YouTube. If you don't see it on YouTube and you missed something, Instagram would be the better way to follow me because I post a lot of interesting stuff throughout the work week. Didn't always be that way. Uh, before, I barely posted anything. Now, I'm like, oh, dude, I'll give you, for instance, I had a, a, a 1965 BW Beetle, Super Beetle that I worked on today. I got a 1967 uh, El Camino that I'm doing a uh, rear main seal, um, front crankshaft seal, and oil pan gasket and valve cover gaskets on. I got the uh, Nissan Pathfinder I'm doing a transmission on. So I started posting, and, and I would I would take all these little clips and post them to Instagram. Same thing with a fire truck, the Formula One Firebird, and Trans Ams. And there, there's so many different old cars that come in that I don't want to share on YouTube, but I, I share on Instagram because I think they're pretty cool cars. When and I'm a car nut. I love seeing cool cars. And I think you guys are too. So I'll post pictures of the newest or the older cars that I'm working on. You're like, what's he really work on? I work on everything. Sometimes it's tractors, sometimes it's RVs, sometimes it's like an old fire truck, sometimes it's an old muscle car. I have a blast, but I post most of these pictures and video clips on Instagram and not so much YouTube. So I would say that would be a reason why you'd want to follow somebody else on a different social media website. 
you know, it's funny because I know when I first started, you know, and coming from a tech background, you know, I was living in Silicon Valley at the time, or at least working there at the time. And, you know, so I was, you know, I was really in deep with all these social media networks because I did work with a lot of them. And the so when I started my YouTube channel, I'm like, well, OK, I've got a Facebook page. I've got a Twitter account. I've got Instagram. I've got Pinterest. You know, I got a, I'm on Reddit. I got all this other stuff. And the reality is with my audience, most of the guys are YouTube only and they wouldn't even be on the Internet if it wasn't for they had to look stuff up. And, you know, they don't want to go on Facebook. They don't want to go to Instagram. Some of the younger guys do. I know a lot of you guys, you know, Audubon, Dan and stuff, he does great stuff. You know, Brad posts some junk on on Instagram also. And uh, the it's but for, for my audience, they, they don't care. And then luckily enough. Uh, YouTube came out with that, uh, we call it the community page. And so I transitioned a lot of the stuff that I was doing on all these other social media stuff. I mean, it's like, it's losing everything. Uh, they, all this other, you know, social media stuff to the community page. And that's where I post all that stuff these days. I think you have to have, uh, so much of a following in order to do that too. Is that, is that not correct? I, I, th I think it's just the thousand mark, uh, sub count. It used to be pretty high. It was like 20,000 or something. But then once they rolled it out and it became popular, they really lowered it. That's why I junk from work can post now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was going to say, I actually, I, I keep asking Audubon Dan to take over my Instagram for like six months. And I, I think I'll be doing better. I really signed up for that just to talk to other YouTubers. Well, and, think about it. like insta his Instagram page is off the hook. What's he yeah. at? Like fifteen thousand or something? Yeah, and not only that, but like I, a lot of people may know or may not know, he has a YouTube channel. That's awesome. He makes very good videos, um, and he's doing both. He's balancing both. So, well, I think he started one before the other, and if I'm not mistaken, I think he was trying to get some feelers in the water to see what people thought about it. And he does do really well on Instagram, and he's not doing as well as he should be or could be exactly. on uh, YouTube. But I think that will all change in time. You know what I mean? Give it, give it time. Give it time. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. I, my th whole thought process is like the bear said, you just keep posting videos and, um, and that's what I've been doing. And, and like my thought process is one day down the road, people will get bored, maybe find my channel and start going through the, the collection, you know, binge watch. Yeah, it's funny. I can always tell when somebody gets on my channel as new and they start binge watching, I'll start seeing all these comments from stuff from two, three years ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, my biggest thing was when people ask me, like, what do you think about this? And I'm like, <sighs> okay, well, I know that I've had a lot of videos and you're probably new to the channel, but there's a, <laughs> we're doing a video on this. Yeah, really check out the uh, playlists or at least scroll through the video feed because I've already covered this topic in an exact video. Uh, I don't care to cover again. Just go back and watch what I already talked about. Yeah, I wish there was some way to like YouTube would have some sort of thing as, as they start typing it in. It'd be like, have you watched this video? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you kind of got to lead the sheep. <laughs> I don't mean to make that kind of reference, but like you do have to drive people where you want to get them on YouTube, unless it's like, you know, your PewDiePie or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can only hope for those kind of view numbers. I I don't know. I like I've never watched a video of his. I've heard the name. I know he has like ninety eight million subs. And I, I, my brain just can't even wrap around the. It's a phenomenon. I, I've I've watched a couple of his uh, videos, and uh, he's another one that I just really can't get into. You know, I, I sit there and I watch it, and I'm like, there. That's, for me, there's no entertainment value. I understand what it is that he's doing, but you got to understand. 
he appeals to a younger audience because he plays video games and does a lot of other things that in, involve a younger audience and younger audiences such as my daughter for instance or my daughters so to speak uh, i always make the joke with them every once in a while i'm like what are you watching and i'll i'll, I'll listen and watch what they're watching and i'm like this is retarded you need yeah. to stop and i'm not trying to make fun of retarded people okay i'm just saying like i'm like this is ridiculous you should not be watching this why don't you watch some of daddy's videos they're like we hear you every day. We don't want to watch you. Send them, over, <laughs> send them over to the maintenance man's channel. You know. <laughs> so, so they get they don't want to hear about mechanics and tools and this and that. They want to hear somebody showing off some kind of stuffed animal making voices. And I'm like, Daddy makes voices too. They're like, Man, we heard your voices. Hold on, what does crack about me? What's that? Stuffed animals making noises. <laughs> <laughs> Now, have you guys heard of Blippy or know of Blippy? Yeah, yeah. I got okay. three kids. I have yeah. not. All right, so and he's in Vegas now too, but he's it's like the modern day Mister Rogers. I'm from Pittsburgh. I'll call it how I see it. But um, he he has a ton of subscribers and stuff. But like my my son was obsessed with him, and now finally I got him into watching Mister Bean and Pink Panther. So like when I when I'm watching a show with him and he picks those shows, I get really excited. But sometimes he's like, we'll watch Blippi. And I'm like, God, you know, how about Mr. Bean? He's like, no, no, Blippi. Cause I can't sit there and watch it. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. No, I got, I, got I, got the, I can't I got remember. My kids to watch something educational. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I was just saying, I'm constantly, you know, catching my kids watching something that's just, you know, candy for the brain. And I'm like, nope, something educational. I don't care what it is. You need to learn something. You know, you can pick the topic. I just want you to learn something. I don't have to worry about the learning curve with my oldest. My youngest likes to watch music videos and dance videos, so that's fun. But my youngest... She's starting to watch some of the videos that my other son watches, who's my youngest son, who lives in North in Oregon. He's starting to watch Jiffy. I hate this fucking channel. I'm sorry. Pardon my language. <laughs> I hate this channel so much. This guy named Jiffy is a puppet. And he says a lot of bad things and wants you to do a lot of bad things. And he's very derogatory, and I don't want my kids watching it. But he gets a kick out of it because it's a puppet. Yeah. Oh, I'm bent. I'm like, no, you will not be watching this channel. But I can't control what my other son watches. Do you guys I watch? Control what my daughter watches. Do you guys watch a uh, or no Jim Brewer, the comedian? Oh yeah, I love Jim Brewer. Oh, yeah. So he's doing. He was on a. Uh, uh, Joe Rogan's podcast and they were talking about kids and they had like you know teenager type growing up almost their kids and he's like do you have that one kid and Joe Rogan's like what do you mean he's like you know the one that you're like you can play out in the yard but don't go in the woods and then the kid goes and he's like three miles down the woods and he's like that's the one I worry about with like hard drugs and stuff <laughs> <laughs> that that was me as a kid. <laughs> that's my that's kind of like my daughter, like her, just how she is. I I worry for her. Yeah, I uh, mine, got them addicted to money. That that's their biggest thing. They want to know if daddy got paid because they're trying to get paid. If they do chores and they do this and they do that and they help their mother out and they take care of the dog poop and etc. That is gonna come up with some money. So when daddy doesn't have the money, I say, not yet. It's going to be on Monday. They kind of slack through the weekend because they're like, well, I've already done what I needed to do. Where's my <laughs> paycheck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know what I do with my kids? Like, and I just, the money in my, my vehicle that piles up the change and the change in my wife's vehicle that piles up, I'll put it in their, you know, piggy banks for three months. And then we just went to Walmart the other day, and it was like, you know, fifty dollars. So they're each able to get a toy, and you do that every like three months, you know. And that's kind of like, 
That's so nice of you. I, I probably wish I would have gone that route. Mine is like uh, we play riddles and things like that. So next thing you know, Daddy owes. Like okay, for instance, my uh, my middle child, I owe her seventy five dollars because she did it awesome on her report card and answered a lot of riddles. My oldest child, she gets fifty bucks because she didn't do as good on her report card, but she killed it on the riddles. And my youngest gets twenty five to fifty bucks because she tried. So now daddy's in debt about 300 bucks to or all of them. And I told her, hey, look, you all want to go to SeaWorld. We couldn't afford Disneyland. Each get 100 bucks going into SeaWorld. So now daddy only has to come up with 300 bucks. But still, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a heartache on the wallet. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I mean, my kids are so young. I still, like, it saves up. But, like, they still have to have, like, two, three weeks of, amazing behavior to get that money you guys want to want to hear something sad it, is when you're a 50 year old man and you know now you're starting your youtube channel and money's tight and all and you, you get to a, a point where you're like between paychecks and your six-year-old who has his own business doing poop pickups like i can loan you some cash because he's got a couple grand in the bank <laughs> that's awesome yeah now, my, my oldest who thinks he's a businessman he's always got these ideas but he never implements anything and i'm staring at him right now you know my daughter just all she wants to do is sit and watch you know makeup tutorials and and weird videos on youtube but my youngest man he is he he's ready to take this money you know the oldest is trying to talk him into building a killer gaming rig he's like no i want to buy a lawnmower so i can add more services to my business like, that's my boy freaking awesome i, but, I just i but, just got proud but your your oldest daughter if she's doing makeup tutorials because and i know that there's parent parental ex, uh restrictions on it she could start effectively her own youtube channel work her way up and when she is of age be ready to go yeah, i'm gonna say then, right now the, the bear the can do makeup tutorials you know how many kids would watch her videos on how to do makeup as a child not an adult Lots of adult women trying to do that. Yeah, you get the big booty bounce and a lot of dads watching. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, if you get the teenagers that are doing it, you got a lot of teens going, how do you look good before prom, et cetera? Yep. That might be a, 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 win, a win for high school girls because they're like, well, I'm trying to get fancied up, but I'm not as old as that lady, and I don't want to look that old. I want to look better because I'm young. So they might actually – it might follow an interest with that. So that's all I'm saying. My my oldest daughter, she wants to get into YouTube. I let her borrow my uh, camera for about a month. And she did okay. She didn't break it uh, or anything like that. And then lately I gave her my cell phone. And I've created her own YouTube channel. But it's under parental restriction. So I told her, I said, when you get enough videos together, we will talk about it. We will sit down. We will try to edit them. And we'll do whatever. Uh, and she's into the gaming community. So we're stacking up content right now. We haven't posted any of it. I pray to God my kids do not see my channel until I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think you have a great channel going for you, man. I really do. And I think it's very important to get your kids involved. And look, uh, let's face it. This horse is only going to ride itself as long as it can. So... Uh, if it's still important to kids today, especially with technology and everything else, uh, and I say, why not get them started? Uh, you know, I've obviously watch them, see what they're doing. Make sure you're giving them the best decision. Make sure they're not, like, incorporating anything that's interpersonal where it's going to share the address or anything like that. But get them involved. Get them on the right track. And then show them all the things and teach them about stranger danger and things like that. And then see what happens. Yeah, you know, I'm a big advocate of being a, an entrepreneur. It was something I wanted to do when I was young. And, you know, I grew up mostly in Iowa. And back then in that culture, entrepreneurs were looked at as charlatan snake oil salesmen. And, you know, you're like, you're, you're not supposed to be an entrepreneur. You're supposed to go get a degree and then work, get a job working for somebody who started a business, which I thought was ironic. And, you know, I, and I did that route. I went that route, you know did that most of my life 
And I don't want my kids to have to go through the same thing, having to work and make somebody else, you know, money. I want them to work for themselves. So that's what we're trying to teach them mostly. And, and YouTube is a great way for anybody to do that. So why, why not get them started young? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you can moderate it. You know, I mean, you're the, you're the one watching them. So now the bear, the den of tools. I have a question for you. Skill twelve volt tools. The cords. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans on reviewing them? Because everything I see, the twenty volts. I actually, I bought a twenty volt impact and drill to test out. Rushed. Was not impressed, but the 12 volt lineup, I mean, it's it looks like they're putting out stuff to compete pretty, pretty well. Do you have any plans of covering that? I, I wanted to. I actually reached out to them trying to see if I could get them to send me some tools. You know, a lot of I got plans to do a whole bunch of stuff. It comes down to the money. You know, it's uh, it was a lot easier when this was a hobby and I could, you know, and I had a real job and it was making good money and I could just buy stuff. And these days it's, you know, what can we squeeze in or what can somebody give me sent for free or what, you know, as Justin pointed, what the, the fans are willing to donate money to help out with, with purchasing. I, I really have a lot of interest in the 20 volt line from them. And we had a talk about them sending me some stuff and then it kind of just dried up. Uh, but, you know, I would love somebody. I don't I don't know I'm going to get around to it is the honest answer. I'd like to, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, I hope one of you guys do it because I'd really like to see those things put through their paces. They look really nice. I, I think I think like I don't think the, the twenty volt lineup. They've done a very good job of reinventing themselves. I don't I don't know if it's too late, too little, but they they're definitely putting some oomph behind this lineup. I'm pretty impressed with the. 12 well, they I don't know if you know they sold out, so that's not skill. It's in the same way. Ego, right? Uh, which I think is part of Sherman, I, I think. But yeah, so it's it's a different company working under, you know, just using the brand. And but I still, you know, the tools look interesting. I see now. Like I look at hyper tough stuff, and it looks like the old skill from in Walmart. Did they like maybe buy or? Walmart's been known to do that, like stock shelves, cut down their space, cut out the company and then buy them, flip them over, and then maybe sell off the leftover parts. Do you think that happened? No, I, I think it's they, they're doing kind of like what Amazon does. They do they find a, a segment that sells and then they come out with their own brand in that segment and give the prime shelf space to themselves. Amazon does it with the Amazon Select items. And, you know, and that's what Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight's totally vertical. You know, they own all the brands or, or 90 some percent of the brands that are in their store. And uh, with, with HyperTuff, all they're doing is they're doing the same thing Harbor Freight does. They go to a Chinese factory, go, here's the specs, make it to spec, make it at this price and we'll buy it from you. I, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, Amazon's ginormous and they came out with TAC Life is actually Amazon's house brand of cordless power tools um, and Walmart came out with HyperTuff. Now, the interesting thing is Walmart's building up there online uh, to go head to head with Amazon, which I think is, is great. But um, I think they they did a lot better with the HyperTuff lineup than Amazon did with Tag Life. Walmart but, will never be Amazon. I'll throw that out there right now. It yeah. might be. But the uh, I just need to throw in a correction. Sorry, but Tac Life is a independent company that is partnered with Amazon. Amazon doesn't own them. Oh really? Yeah, yeah I, they've reached out to me on a number of occasions. They cycle through people over there so fast, it's ridiculous. The the tools that they have, well, they're decent. I've tested. They sent me the the Sawzall. I tested it. I actually rather liked it. I think they've got some great tools for the price. They look nice. Uh, they're definitely at the right price point, but. Man, they, they they got rid of got rid of all the English speaking people over there, and I just get these emails. It's the worst, you know, Chinese English you've ever seen. I'm like, I get people from you know the unknown Chinese manufacturers who have better English than these guys. They so, have a um, they have a good whole saw kit for like 14 bucks, 
And if you're doing like cat, like cabinet work or just for around the house, it, it is a decent kit to have. It's just, you know, wood pole saw, but it's pretty well made. Um, there's another brand on Amazon is, is the Vaughn house. Uh, Justin Dell, I think you did the three eights ratchet on them. Yeah. Um, that, that one, uh, was a friend of ours that had worked with us for a while and then, uh, he no longer works with us. And then you got that ratchet. Yeah. And it was pretty good. It had a lot of similarities to the, uh, the, the lineup, the, the batteries didn't mesh up well. Um, but they were okay for what they were worth as far as Gen 1 Milwaukee. Not talking about Gen 2. Yeah. Gen 1 Milwaukee, close comparison. Those, those Von House tools or Von Haas or whatever you want to call them, they're, they're coming out with a bit of a good lineup. But yeah, it, I wouldn't make them a go-to, though. You know, I mean, they, like said, they were pretty good for Gen 1 comparison. If you're looking for Gen 2 or something more powerful – uh, I would probably look towards like Hercules, Earthquake, even the Milwaukee Gen 2. I probably would not go with Bauer or um, uh, Van Hoos or Van Hoos at this Brad, point. Brad's workbench says, I'm not a fan of TAC life business practices. That's that's very much a comment Brad's workbench would say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Van, Van House, Van Hoos, wherever they are. They're another OEM who are, are uh, buying stuff. With, it's called white boxing or OEMing stuff, where they reach out to these Chinese companies and they have stuff manufactured uh, in their name. If you notice, they're actually their their 20 volt lineup is the exact same or coming from the same factories as the stuff that you're now seeing from Grizzly. Yeah, like like uh, when Bam. Vampire Tools came out with their lineup, and it was done by uh, engineer or something other. Now, um, the bear. Next week, I believe Brad's workbench will be back in town. Are you going to uh, have him on for a live stream? The Brad's going to have him on for one of my live streams. Yeah, I mean he's 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 been asking like, should I do it? And I said, yeah, it's a good idea. If the bear will have you, I mean, yeah, he is. Not everyone yeah. welcomes Brad's workbench, but I'll be honest. I've never tried other than you know through you guys asking me to be on here doing the whole thing, you know, long distance hosted kind of stuff. I've never done that. We had some people, you know, neighbors come by and stuff, and you saw, you know, my, my bud yeah, Jazz. Um, but you know, that's a great idea. I'd love to do that. I, I think if you're gonna have a person on, maybe, maybe for just a little bit to talk stuff with but brad's workbench kind of lines up with your channel fairly well i would say uh i i like brad he and i chat every so often and you know i give him a hard time just because i like him so much but the uh you know he's got a great channel and he's uh you know trying to do some cool stuff and he does some cool work you know in the in real world as it was and uh i think he's got a lot of good stuff to say uh not that you don't justin but anyway no it's i really do like the idea of trying to support all the other YouTubers out there and, and trying to spread the love around. So I'm going to be trying to make myself more available. And I guess if people want to come on to my channel too, I guess I never really thought about it. Sure. So one of the things that I've actually thought about, and um, <clears throat> maybe you guys, since we're already talking about it a little bit, one of my first videos that I'm getting ready to post here, hopefully this weekend, uh, will involve at least four, if not six, different YouTube content creators all sharing their uh, thoughts and opinions on the cordless lineups offered at Harbor Freight. Whether good, bad, or null and void, they'll all be on the video. What I thought would be pretty cool is to uh, bring more people on to the channel, whether they're small or big. And see what their uh, what their thought is with certain tools. That way, you're not just getting one opinion; you're getting multiple opinions. So you always have a stream of comments. If I post a video and say, "Hey, I think this thing is garbage," but you have five other videos and they say, "Hey, I've used it and it's well, okay, great." Can I jump Send in real quick? Content. Let me post it. You share with us how it worked out for you. Where 
how, when you used it, how long you've had it, etc. And uh, I think this video that I'm getting ready to post this weekend is going to be absolutely phenomenal because it posts, like I said, about four to six different opinions about the same exact topic all in one video. And you can skim through to your favorite point, but I think it's going to be awesome. Well, I'm going to just hop right in there and uh, I'm going to throw out a name brand, Tecton. Fuck you. And I'm, 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 trying, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep PC. That was the first thing that came out. I'm sorry. Look, no, 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 no. I don't care sure. about no damn Tecton, okay? Tecton is not going to be in my repertoire. Can, can I just... Can I just say, go ahead, Justin, go, ahead, go ahead, Justin? I actually, I I understand your point. Uh, you, I talked to you about this, and you said um, when you're in automotive school, they were like, "You all right, buddy?" Wrong pipe. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> you said that they were. Um, you said tech, and I started wanting to grow up. I'm sorry. I'm, it's my bad. You said they're bottom of the barrel at Walmart brand, and I I can understand that bad taste. You get that once, and you say, I'm, I'll, I'll never try them again, right? Yeah. And Bear, you're, I, I've watched your whole uh, history on Tecton, and I, I've used Tecton before I even watched that video. I have to say I, I've been impressed with everything I've used from them. Well, so, the rally, I've only used them in this past year, you know, and I didn't really know who they were. I'd seen them on Amazon, and I just assumed they were some Taiwanese company because of the name and the origin of the tool. Right. And, uh, you know, come to find out they've been around for 40, 50 years as, you know, Michigan Industrial Tool, at which point they were, you know, almost Harbor Freight level. They were like, when you go to the grocery store and you find the, you know, they have that big tool you know, dollar tool sale up front kind of thing. They have all the bins of stuff. That's where you'd see a lot of their stuff. And I, I just, I don't know. I mean, do you have experience with the old Michigan Tecton tools or the new line that's been out in the past couple of years? Old school. Yeah. It was, the, it was the bargain bin special, man. I went in there looking for a cheap socket sack to fix up some Ford F-150 that I was working on. This was been about 10, 15 years back. They were in the clearance section, and I could buy an entire quarter-inch socket set for about six bucks. Yeah, and and those sockets were worth six bucks. If you that. try to tighten a battery terminal cable, and you might get it a quarter pin, a quarter inch past snug before it would break. And so, yeah, no, thank you. Okay, I don't care how good or poor they made. If there was ever one tool that I would never try out, and I'm, I'm keeping this. I'm going to keep it to the death of me. I will never try or put a Tekton tool, anything, in my video content. Now, I will say this, though. I'm I sending you Tekton stuff. I okay. went to Tennessee. Andy, client, and everybody else, had they had some tools with them. They did bring out a, uh, a Tecton product that was a ratchet. I think it was a three-eighths or quarter inch. What do you think? And they physically put it in my hand alongside with a gear wrench 84 tooth and a gear wrench 120 XP. I tried the uh, 84 tooth. I, I moved it around. I said, do you feel that binding? Do you feel that slip? I would not buy this. They gave me the 120 XP. I was like, Okay, that's pretty damn smooth. I would probably pick this up. There's no binding. There's not there's going to be any slip. It might be a pretty good product. They gave me a Tecton, and I was like, I hate myself for saying this, but it was hand-in-hand hand the same as the uh, Gear Wrench 120 XP. Now, that being said, I still will never buy Tecton anything. <laughs> Come on! No, no, sir. No. You got to be open to, to allowing your know, company. Uh, and there's, and there, and there, look, I'm a pretty open guy. I, I open my doors for most anything. Tecton, it's the only thing that I've never bought, and it's the only thing that I retain to this day that I will never buy. Do I need to get the some video? You talked about some of the politics. I'm like, well, 
I don't really care about politics that much, but I'll tell you what, that's just an extra reason why I would never, ever buy Tekton. The, do we need to get the uh, the doll out? You can show us where the bad tool touched you. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I will never buy Tekton. I don't advocate Tekton. They can ask me, hey, would you like to try this tool out? I will say, no, thank you. Well, that's too bad, man, because I, I think you're missing <laughs> out. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 they seem like a great tool company now, but... I can understand. Uh, well, then you might be an advocate here in a couple of years. Nah, I, I understand the bad, the bad taste in your mouth when you have tools sometimes. No, have you ever eaten food that's more than a few days past Do you? Have you ever drank milk that's more than a couple days past its expired date? Yeah, you should. You want to continue to drink that milk or eat that food? That's Probably not how constipated I am. <laughs> I had that problem with tequila one time. I'm just saying. For six years. Tequila. That's different. That's different. You talk about booze. You talk about wine. They say it betters with age. Yeah, there's a there's a fine line of difference. I'm saying tectin is like food. I make a tuna sandwich. I put it in the fridge. Is it going to taste the same five days from now? No. It's going to taste like garbage. But you can have that can of tuna for 10 years and it'll taste the same no matter what. The worst part about it is that I got to ship the garbage back to have it warranted. Jaron Wilson says Tecton is like Lunchables of tools. Yeah. There's a lot. You're, you're going to do it for the freaking Reese's peanut butter cup. There's a lot more worse brands. The bear. I'm sure you that have. That is not true. That is not true at all. You're giving them too much credit. That is the worst brand you could ever put your fingers in. I have Tecton stuff. It works. I know, and you should know how bad it is. <laughs> you know? I mean. <laughs> oh, so nice of you to share with us one screwdriver you picked up for a review. Thank it's, you. It's a file, actually. Actually, I did buy this. <laughs> This kit right here. That's a box. That's not Tekton. I know. It's a drill bit kit I bought for $11 on Amazon for my first time homeowner's kit. And uh, I for 11 bucks, I'm actually going to open this up right now for you guys to have a look at it. I bought that kit. I threw it away. Did you? Yeah. I thought it was Damn dumb. it. The ma are the masonry bits no good? Yeah, thank you for showing us some German-made tools, which I can contest to. Those things are good. That's well, not checked in. Yeah, I can contest. This is kind of very disappointing. What uh, is it, Tecton? No, no. It's I bet not. if you had a Tecton one in your hand, like this, this thing sucks ass. I will tell you this. Ryobi makes some of the worst bit kits. Not you, know. true. you have not lined them up with Tecton yet. Hecton doesn't make <laughs> Ir Irwin and Ryobi makes terrible, in my opinion, bit kits. Yeah, I've got a Ryobi bit kit that just it's they're disposable, man. They're like it came with like 300 bits, but you just yeah. you use them two or three times and they're done. You toss out. I was wondering why there's like five of each size bit. I'm like, why do I need five of each size? Oh, because they die. Like the the Phillips too, they give you like 500 of them. That's part of the the thousand bit kit and it's because they fucking bend every time you're trying to screw something in they don't work i will say this i thought that dewalt coming out with their multi-bit set between number twos and uh, was it t15 or t20s that was a phenomenal kit because you will wear through them not saying that they shouldn't have incorporated less but the fact that they gave you like 10 extra options those are the ones, those are the fasteners you're going to run into the most. You're going to abuse them the most. That's an old school kit. It's not yeah. see-through. And, and, you know, and you can always just make your own. Right. I knew you throw them in there. Now, I'm not a fan of the Milwaukee kit. I yeah. have, We bought the Milwaukee kit. Those magnets will not let the bits go. I hate the Milwaukee kit. 
I will say if you can do it, I bought this Erwin drill bit kit and uh Isn't that a DeWalt? I mean look at the wrong thing. But no, yeah, this the Erwin. But this is a, these are good drill bits, you know. I mean I've got a quarter inch, they do not warranty quarter inch. Erwin doesn't? Nope. They will not warranty up to one quarter inch. One quarter inch and below, they will not warranty out everything else they will. Them sons of guns. I do have a question. Now, I was going to make a video tomorrow, actually, on Ryobi impact guns. A shootout. Any interest in watching that? Dude, if you post anything, I'm interested in watching it. I don't ah, you know, know what the hell it is, you know. Don't make me blush. No, but yeah, I mean, make you blush. I'll make you blush so hard you wish that your face was a cherry. We'll, we'll go from from the old one, you know. Okay. All, all the way up to the uh, compare it to. I got I got the brushless three speed one. The uh, green one, the green one, all nice and green and pretty and freaking new. Yeah, I don't have it right you next to me. some blue thing that you bought oh, like yeah. years ago. I'm like, dang, this guy's like five that 50 years old. He's older than I am. He's older than me. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, this shit. has uh, 3,500 uh, impacts per minute though. Did you get it from your dad? I mean, god dang. I mean, that's that's pretty old. Yeah, I bought it. This was my first kit was the, the blues. Did you buy it when you were six? No, I, I'm... I'm two years younger than you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I bought my house ten years ago. Oh, uh, all right, all right. I, I just, I just double checking. And like, and like, when I bought my house, honestly, my uncle's like, go in. There was a Ryobi kit. It came with a drill, uh, sawzall, a flashlight, and um, they saw you coming. So, something else, hundred bucks, still work. Still have the drill. Still have the flashlight. Still have the sawzall. They all work. All right, so I feel like I kind of got beat up a little bit here, a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share something with you, and I gotta ask because you cannot say you're an advocate of every company. There's everyone always has that one company. They will never, ever buy. I want to ask both Neil, the maintenance man, and Redbeard, the bear, what's the one company, not in one million years, you don't care if they made it so cheap, so affordable, so freaking incredible, what is the most non-purchasing company you'd ever buy from? Like, There's one company that you say, absolutely not, I don't care what the hell they sell, I'll never buy from them. There's got to be one. Mine is Tekton, obviously. But what is yours? Um, you're not gonna like my answer. My, I, you know, being a Midwest boy, it's all about being practical. And you know, if like I'm, I'm not a fan of, of Sears right now because I don't like the guy who's in charge. If that changed, if they became a different company, like that's what happened with Tekton. You know, the old man stepped down. The, the, the older kid uh, took over, and they, he had a new vision for the company. He turned it into something different. Companies change over years. Uh, like right now, I probably wouldn't buy anything from Stanley Black & Decker. I'm just across the board, especially with their power tools. I'm not happy with what they're doing. I think Black & Decker has gone way cheap. I think Porter Cable has been basically orphaned. Craftsman doesn't know who the hell they are yet. And DeWalt, I think, is resting on the laurels. You know they made their you know their uh, their bones 20 years ago and now they're just coasting so, so would that include all three companies like dewalt porter cable craftsman uh, there's more than three but and Mac. Lot. okay uh, cool. Good enough. but but if they but i give them the opportunity to change if they want to get their act together and get competitive they can do that i mean milwaukee 20 years ago was not the tool company they are now Correct. I um, I'm gonna have to actually agree with the bear there. Uh, I'm a big Stanley fan. I'm not a fan of the company, and here, like, I, I have never been a Dewalt fan, but for a company to 
basically they probably went to a bunch of smart people and said we need to change over from 18 volt to 20 volt and you have to do it good so everyone will jump ship because we're, we're going to ride that name so they came out with the flex volt good for them that was a great idea but that's how they got people to jump ship off the whole line batteries over to a brand new line and now this is what frustrates me even more is they pick up craftsmen invest a bunch of money into that put dewalt on the back burner and it's just like a, a game of fucking chess basically for them but you've been a ryobi fan for years so what would make it to where you were obviously you weren't a fan to begin with what would make it to where that would be the one tool that you would never buy? Ryobi? No, no, no. Obviously, you're a Ryobi fan. Right. Why would uh, whatever Black & Decker, Stanley, etc. is doing, why would that affect your decision? Is there is is that a company that you would never invest in no matter what it is they do? Or did your mind recently yeah. change as a result of what it is they're currently doing? That's no. The, I, I, I have invested in Bostitch for their air tools and uh, stuff like that. I invest in some a lot of Stanley hand tools. Um, not so much, you know, it's all black and decker and stuff. And I have older, I have an older uh, drywall screw gun that's a black and decker industrial. I have an old black and decker worm gear drive surf saw. Um, they used to make awesome stuff. They screwed up the company, but somehow figured out how to stay afloat and ahead of the game somehow. And I think that's what's so frustrating about that company is as far as they're behind, somehow they figure out a way to stay ahead. I see that because that's kind of a similar situation with my tecton experience now granted i only bought ever one thing from them 15 17 years ago but my question is who will you never buy from ever period i'm a fan of tools so i'll try everything you're such a liar that's true you're a liar there's even a brand outside of tools that i'm that way about hold on miss it hey jess is there a brand, any kind of brand you can think of that I just hate? Not even tools, just anything else? Starbucks? Kimber. I'm pretty sour on Kimber, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but if they got their act together and they changed and they did a Mia Koopa and said, you know, we screwed up and fixed their stuff. I mean, think about it. You know, uh, Justin, you're a car guy. Do you remember Mercedes in the 80s and the late 80s or in the 90s? Oh, they dude, were, yeah, yeah. They went from bulletproof to just total junk, but they've pulled it out and they've come up with some great cars since then. They have, but you know, there's a there's a bigger following with BMW, to be honest. I mean, even when you when you date it back that far back, <clears throat> BMW never really fell wayside. That was always like a good strong suit. Oh yeah. The part that I saw over the years was that. There was a larger amount of Chrysler fans up until a certain point, which I'll say early to mid 2000s, and that's when the Chrysler fanatics started to fall off and start looking towards other companies. I'm not saying that Chrysler makes shit products because obviously they have their problems as every other company does, but you didn't see as many non-fans in Chrysler products until the early to mid 2000s. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like the old Mopar stuff. You know, back in the late sixties, early seventies. Most people do. Yeah. And but the late, you know, the K cars and all that, I tried to stay far away from those. Yeah, a lot uh, of problems. A lot of problems. I got my Voyager, and that thing, man, I drove that all over. We drove down to Florida, up through the Great Lakes, and all over the East Coast, and you know, and that really kind of opened me up to them. And then when I had a family, we bought a caravan, and uh, that we we drove. To death, throw it right into the ground, and now I've got a you know a Ram fifteen hundred that I just absolutely love. So we've we've heard all the ins and outs of like what we would not buy tool wise, 
Let's talk about what we would not buy car-wise. And not just limiting it to just the problems they have, but talking about what their overall value would be and why you wouldn't want to invest in them. Justin, either. I got some news for you, right? So you you told me, suck it up, buttercup. Go get your fucking uh, um, things fixed on your truck, right? The... Uh, the airbag that's very important i'm not i'm not going to ever deny that you got your child's right. safety your family safety yes i went in for three recalls they fixed six perfect in four hours but i was just surprised but it, like, it can be done yes thank you thank you for uh for setting me straight on that one there i'm telling you like if you have a if you have a vehicle your family is of the utmost importance and there's sometimes there's recalls that you cannot predict that they already know based on vin number your make model what's included look you don't want to be driving down the road and wondering is my airbag going to air is my airbag going to deploy if it does deploy, am I going to get shrapnel in the face or my kid's going to die? Like, you don't want that on your conscience if you could have done something to fix it. So, absolutely. Yeah, take it in and get it fixed. Well, you know, I'll show you both. <laughs> it's going to be very random, but as we're on cordless tools. So, the original Ryobi jigsaw, the old blue there. The cool thing about this is it accepts T-shank jigsaws and just the, uh, it accepts bo both, I guess, I guess just like the straight ones, the straight bits there. Damn. I, I swear to God, I know that we're like relatively close in age, but God, you're showing me some tools that are like 30, 40 years old. No, we, just iCAD batteries are around. <laughs> we need to put a GoFundMe account for him to get him some new tools. I know. We got to get him some new tools. He's sure. What do you think of the iCAD shit? Dude, nobody cares about that crap. I, I get it. It's, 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 it's last you a long time. I appreciate it. Get yourself some new shit and show everybody what you think about the new versus old. I do. God, that stuff's so old, I'm surprised it hasn't blown up in your face. Oh, I've smoked a few of them, but I mean. I'm, I know. I'm surprised that you haven't smoked it to the point where it blows up in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, should do a, we should do a telethon thing. We can, like, you know. Raising money for uh, for Neil to help him, you know, get into the what, what was it the the lithium ion century here. That well, should be his next video, like but which I'm, Ryobi I'm, tool did not blow up in my face and cut my nose off. Like that would be a <laughs> kind of nice video. The, you know? the weird thing is, everyone I've owned, and the other cool thing about Ryobi is the horseshoe magnets. People thought that was a gimmick, but I'll tell you what: 10, 12 years later. You know, when you're doing drywall or something, you throw screws on there. I just use my teeth. Yeah, you could do that too, you know. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, your face does not look like it has exploded yet. I think you should be really up close and personal with those things and see if they explode. I did well, first of all, you guys keep up the conversation. <laughs> I've got, I got tools for you real quick. Well, my favorite is, is that his fan – is bright green and it's Ryobi and it's the newest and the latest of greatest but his contractor kit is like 30 years old <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just giving it a hard time because it's fun but for everyone who's listening I, I'm a huge advocate of use what works for you and don't upgrade just just to upgrade if it still works and it works for you don't spend the money remember especially this you gotta look at it like you're a small business you are being provider to somebody else you're paying for their own tools. So if they work and they're doing fine, you don't need to upgrade them just to upgrade them. But my thought process is upgrade them right now while the prices are down. So you can get in a lithium lineup, but still have the same badass tool and then not have to worry about them exploding in your face. The nice thing is if he upgrades to the new Ryobi, he can still use all his old batteries. Even the iCAD? I think we... I think it was the other way around. You can use the. I uh, say not the iCAD though, but lithium ion, sure, but not iCAD. So you can use the lithium ion in the old iCAD batteries or the old iCAD uh, tools. 
Nah, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you can use either ICAD or you can use lithium ion. They have two different infrastructures on how you can slide the batteries in. I think the way we were the same. They made that big promise that they wouldn't change the, the format of their batteries. Oh, I'm sure they did. There's no way you can do an ICAD to a freaking lithium. Yes, they did. Did they really? That's exactly what they did, yeah. Well, then show us. I don't have my NICADs here. Come on, you have the fan. You, we, we know you have it. Let's do it. Well, I'm saying here is a lithium ion battery. And well, well here, we'll just go through it. So Come if, on. I, if I do this this impact off, we're going to start with the old the old Ryobi, right? Yeah, the one from 1930, yeah. right? They, they will move up to, to the brushed three speeder here. That's on speed two, but you know, had to show me how. Try LEDs, right? All right. Show me, how. Show me the batteries. Well, no, they're they're all. Uh, I get that. Show me the battery. It is. I want to see the two batteries, the iCAD versus the lithium. I don't have. I don't have. I do have the. Um, here's the twelve volt, iCAD. Here's a 12 volt lithium, all right? So take it out, take it out. 12 volt lithium, take it out. I haven't charged this in a little bit, but take, take the battery out. God, I did take the battery out, <laughs> but you can hear it dying. The difference between NICAD and lithium is you can hear the NICAD dying, the lithium you can sense it, but it just pretty much dies. All right, uh, show us both batteries, please. So, all right, well, here we go. Here's the other impact. This is just the uh, the brushless updated version of this, surprisingly. But it sounds sounds pretty good. And then you got the uh, the new brushless three speed. Um. Which is this thing is actually four thousand impacts per minute. The only thing, like I like Ryobi, I like Rigid. They're bigger and bulkier than Milwaukee. Now take the battery out of the lithium and shove it into your iCAD and show me that it works. I did that once. You just did the blue right one. Now. Yeah, I did. So I, I just looked it up on Ryobi's website, and you can use the lithium batteries in the old blue tools, but yeah, you can't I, use the the NICAD batteries in the new green tools. That's true. Do I, it. I screwed Do up. It. I screwed up a radio that way. Do drill, it. The drills I haven't screwed up. Uh, I have done that with the. Um, I don't have. I mean, the hey, if you're scared, don't worry about it. You know, but I'm saying, go ahead and do it. I'll, yeah, I'll do it when I have the opportunity. I'm just saying I don't have the opportunity it. right now. You can do it right now. I mean, I, I mean, you want to do it? I understand. Right, it'll be a shit until you do it. <laughs> just now, first of all, um, you said do, send you a video on on my Ryobi tools, right? Okay. Okay. Fine. It's gonna be like a 20 minute video tool that I own, and it says Snap On. I'm, I'm yeah, out out there. Don't worry about it, okay? That is a tecton, tecton, and this is a, a blue point, okay? Okay. Oh, Justin. Yeah, I'm glad you I believe just, me. I just thought of the tool company I will never buy a tool from. <laughs> <laughs> Plus tool. <laughs> Fest? Fest tool. I would never buy a Fest tool. Fe oh, yeah. I I agree with that. I just... I can't justify the cost at all. I, I, I played around with it. Some of the stuff is nice, but, man, there's just nothing there that, that says you need to spend this kind of money on these tools. Um, The Dan tools, have you tried any of the... Um, the Metabo HTP stuff out? No, I haven't. I, I haven't worked with anything with Metabo in years. The Hitachi stuff you know, I have, but the not none of that stuff. That, se that actually seems like a pretty decent lineup. I guess they're going to be rolling those into lows to replace the Hitachi. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, they seem. Yeah, I've I've watched uh, VCG did a few videos on it. And, um, you guys watch that channel all the time. Who's that? VCG. VCG construction. Vince, but never, Vince. Never heard of him. Really? Yeah. The, <laughs> uh, the bear. You got to check out VCG construction. AKA Vince, that guy is an animal. He, he does, does things all the time, always in a store, always showing you live the hot tool deals of the day. Freaking awesome. No, I, I'm just teasing him. I, I, I know Vince. So they, they do hustle over there, that's for yeah. sure. A couple Jersey boys or something like that. Joyzy. Joyzy. <laughs> or Philly. Philly. Well, um, no, how many miles to Philly? About 10? Yeah, if that. <laughs> they got a nice little channel over there, though. I tell you, but you know, Jersey really is not very big, though. I mean, if, if I remember correctly, when I lived in Philly, you could drive about 10 to 20 minutes and you were in Jersey. You could drive 10 to 20 minutes outside of Jersey and you were in Philly. Well, I mean, it might be like 10 or 20 minutes, but like if it's beach season, you're talking about three hours for. Oh, 15, yeah, the traffic in Jersey. Yeah. And all the roundabouts and the stupid jug handles. I hate not being able to fill my own gas. You should have to the <laughs> gas station. And, and like the, the crazy thing is people there are like, you pump your own gas in your state, you'll blow up. You're like, no, you, you'll be all right. You'll be good. Hey, uh, you should do a collaboration with Vince. Me? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't think that He happen. invites everybody when he goes live and he's in a store. You, Neil, need to go live with him in the store. Yeah, I'm six and a half hours away from him. I tried to do a TTR. It didn't work out. And um, uh, But, yeah, they, they have some uh, – they've got some good content over there. You should do that. Yeah, I was hoping they were going to come out to Vegas for the National Hardware Show. They had talked about it, but that didn't happen. Maybe they'll come out for uh, SEMA. We can do something. What is SEMA? Like, I'm very new to YouTube. That's so. a big ass car event, and they got so much stuff between aftermarket, exhaust work, the cylinder heads. They got hot rods for days. I mean, it's anyone who's anyone that's a car enthusiast is there. Yeah, it's like the biggest event in, you know, as far as conventions in Vegas, which is known for big conventions, and uh, it, it's going to be fairly epic. Um, I don't think Harbor, sorry, I don't think Harbor Freight's there yet. I was trying to talk them into going, but uh, pretty much every other tool company is going to be there. All the the tool chests and everything, and plus all the aftermarket stuff. That's what it is. It's the aftermarket car show. And I think it's in late fall. Early, yeah, I think it's like November or October, something like that. <laughs> November, I'm thinking. Brad's workbench wants to know if uh, Scotty Kilmer will be there. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Scotty Kilmer is absolutely killing it. I mean, the guy's got over 2 million subscribers. He's back east. I mean, what does he really need to do outside of chilling in his house, hanging out in the front of his garage? Talking about tools that he got for free. I mean, come on. What am I doing wrong then? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you're still young. I'm, I'm just like <laughs> he. Uh, I've watched a few of his videos just because people like find them so much, and uh, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, anyone making content, doing whatever they want to do, you know. I mean, here's the deal, Scotty Kilmer to me. He is the fucking shit as far as like old school meets new school technology. He gives a chance to share his old school approach with new school approach, does it in the courtesy of his own home. And what makes him likable outside of the lack of profanity, the no drinking, the no smoking, and he does it quick, short, and sweet videos. He tells you what it is that you're looking for, what it is that you need, and then he moves on. That's it. He does 
a lot of clickbaity videos. I'll give you that. I'll watch some clickbaity videos where I'm like, okay, I'm expecting this. He will answer one subscriber's question. It could be in the beginning. It could be in the middle. It could be at the end. But his video title will usually include a viewer's question. And it'll take place somewhere between the video. The rest of the time, it's basically like watching him on live stream. So you're just sitting there, you're waiting for the question that he put on the content. Eventually, he gets to it. Uh, it's not exactly what you were expecting. And or you know, you're 10 minutes deep and you're like, well, that wasn't what I wanted. And then that's what it is. That's actually a nice uh, way to put it. He's, he's clickbait. He's a clickbait master. It's, I'm not saying what he says doesn't have value, but... And the problem is that's what YouTube wants. YouTube wants, you know, these these out there outrageous kind of titles with outrageous thumbnails. Going, see. you won't believe this, or you got to see this. And you know, people ask me why doesn't my channel have you know 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 subscribers? And I can't bring myself to do that kind of stuff. You could. And, well, you it's know, hard. I, it's hard too because even I have had at least I would say a half a dozen clicked baity videos where I'm like, well, I just want to find a catchy title. So I'll put a catchy title in the description. And yeah, I talk about it, but it's a little bit indifferent than what people are looking for. And it doesn't come out that way. I get a lot of people saying clickbait, fuck you. Yeah, sorry, pardon my language. Uh, you're you're an at an a hole and then they move on. Well, you know, um that that's like I, I i i like vcg a lot i like their channel like i wish I, he wouldn't have shaved his beard though i i gotta say this like i'm a very visual person and i and i've seen vince with a beard for so long and when i saw him with no beard i was like ah, what are you doing what happened to the beard i can't grow a beard I don't know what it was, but I love the fact that you had one. Like, that was a, a, a big take. For me. I'm not saying it was like only take, but that was a big thing for me. I was like, man, you had a beard. It was awesome. I couldn't grow that if I even tried. It's like, I was getting too long. I'm like, yeah, but you baby shaved. You didn't trim. You didn't cut it down. You straight shaved the whole thing off. That's how he started, <laughs> you know? Um, but the, the one thing I'll just, I'll just go in. And, and say about them is um you, you know the last few times I've been on their channel to like on on their live streams and stuff and they seem to like zero in more on the trolls than the actual uh w what we're focusing on and that kind of turned me off a little bit like the clickbait I know they're trying to poke fun and stuff but it's like I'm I, I don't know. Man, I'm just being old and grumpy. I'm good at that part. I like to do the old and grumpy thing. Yeah, you know, you know, like, I mean, I, I've been in there where they do the TT, the tool test for our lives. I donate a little money, but he's off on some tangent that, you know, I, I just, I want to hear. Um, and like I said, it might just be me being old and grumpy. <laughs> I think they make amazing content and they they should focus less on I mean they have a hundred some thousand subscribers if two people hate it who the who cares well it, I, I like their kind of I like Vince he he seems like a great guy a family guy and you know they try to keep it family friendly I, I like you know that more channels are doing that sort of thing and you know they really you know stumbled on to some secret sauce there between between the stuff with the uh, tool test raw and the the stuff with you know uh, you know his kind of clickbaity stuff, but you know what he's he's making money, so I, I can't fault him. I I honestly wish I had I could do that. I because you know this is what we do for a living, and if I could you know have some extra money to feed the kids better and do more things, and that would be great. But it's, it's you know it's also the audience. I feel like if I went that way. I'd lose the audience I have, and I like the community. That's the whole reason I started this was for the community I have. 
and I can always tell when I got a video that goes outside my normal audience and gets pretty big because I'll get people coming in saying all sorts of you know horrible things and stuff and I got to go through the comments and delete all sorts of stuff because you know my kids read these comments and yeah. other people's kids look through this stuff and I don't want to have a channel like that so it's this catch 22 between growing and trying to be a bigger channel but also trying to have the, the community because if I don't have the community that I can be proud of I don't want it see now I'm uh, I want to agree with you but on a different uh, level if that makes sense I uh, I enjoy the community that we're in I obviously I enjoy your channel I enjoy many others especially ones that are PC and some that are not so PC my channel not so PC not for everybody not for the faint of heart I can't seem to answer everybody's question because they're like do you have to cuss so much do you have to smoke so much do you have to drink so much and I'm like well, I don't think I do any of those things so much but my kids, they live it, they see it, they understand it. It is what it is. Now, I'm trying to keep mine as real as I possibly can. If I said, oh, I never drink, I never smoke, I never did anything bad, I'm just here, I feel like I would be fake. Okay, look, did I quit smoking recently? Yeah, I've, I've quit smoking about six months ago, or six weeks ago, I'm sorry. So that's pretty cool, right, for me, because I'm saving money. Um, switched over to this vapor thing, which has some nicotine, but not enough to where I, I had enough for cigarettes. I've cut my beer intake in half. I, I've cut out fast food. I've done a lot of things that are more healthier for myself, not for my channel, more for myself uh, than for the channel itself. However, I'm not going to be fake. I'm here, okay? This is the real world. The real world is, is that life is not always peachy okay i might go into work i might have a really suck day i might not have anything go right and it'll be a terrible day but i have to figure out how to figure it out and how to deal with it sometimes i'm able to take everybody along with the adventure other times i have to figure it out on my own you know i just don't get to see it so there's a lot of there's a lot of time frames when i'm sitting there trying to figure out how to embrace the suck and get jobs finished that are not always on camera that's fine i don't own my own shop it is what it is the fact of the matter is is that it's all real it's all real all the time hey look it ain't easy being greasy okay <laughs> sometimes you go to work and it's a complete crap show i mean you have no idea what's going to happen they're like hey 1963 blah 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 came in need you to do a, a transmission on it this thing hasn't seen a transmission service in like 30 years things are broken things are rusted things are you know they're gonna fall apart they're gonna break that you don't know of and guess what you can only buy them out of a catalog or on ebay or whatever and so next thing you know you're in a waiting game the car ties up a lift for a week two weeks three weeks at a time until you get the parts that you need you hope you can fix it and you hope you can send the customer down the road. It is a battle. People don't see that on other people's channels. They see, oh, uh, yeah, it's easy. I just take it off and I put it on. No, that is not the way that it goes. Usually you get stuck and you're screwed and you're stuck with this car on a lift for three or four weeks and it takes up a lift for the entire time and you can't move on to the next thing or you do you move on to four or five projects so for myself i usually operate three to four lifts at one time there's only seven lifts in the shop i'm occupying three to four of them at one time that's a nightmare for any mechanic or technician because i'm waiting for parts it's 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 not as easy as it seems i, I think uh, you've got a great channel i the only, the only issue I ever really had was the smoking because it made it hard to see you. And, uh, you know, the, uh, but, you know, that's your reality. And as long as you stick to it and you're honest with it and you're honest with the community you build with it, I think that's great. You know, I, I've always loved watching your stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have reached out to you and I remember before uh, King or Hammers because I was headed, trying to head down to that. And, that would be cool. 
and uh, hopefully next year I'm going to make it down there. We're trying to trying to figure out a way to swing a, a quad, uh, not quad, but a, a UTV, and uh, you know so go out and do some more riding, do some dunes and stuff down there. Well, even and, after, I don't know if you know this, but uh, me and Matt from Bleep and Jeep, we uh, coerce back and forth between Instagram and Facebook. And sometimes via text message. Uh, but he didn't have any cell phone reception when he came out here because Johnson Valley, no cell phone reception, makes yeah. it hard to get in touch with people. Maybe we should do it like a, a Jeep build because I don't know if you know this. I'm a Jeep guy from back in the day. The first like nice vehicle I bought myself was an 84 CJ7. Oh, that was and, and I I just, I, I love Jeeps and loved them for years. I even like the new Gladiator. I wasn't sure about it, and I saw one in all white, and I was like, oh, I, I want that. The so white bad. hates it. I absolutely love it. I told her, I said, look, I wanted a brand new Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon four-door, but I said, as soon as they come out with the Gladiator, that just gave me a truck plus my Rubicon, which made it that much more likable. And she's like, those things are ugly. I would never want to own one. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, this is the perfect jeep for us <laughs> now if they could just throw a cummings diesel and turn it into a dually so i can tow with it then i'd be set so i, I got two questions there the uh the jeep grand wagoneer the v8 the woody those those I, I always loved those jeeps did i get an answer on the uh the impact ryobi girl off is that a go or a no-go that's a, that's a stalemate. We're waiting for you to come with the video. Explain to us whether or not it was good, worth it, or not. I, I cannot say yay or nay. I need to see a video, man. You put together a video between your 1920s uh, Ryobi to the newer Ryobi, and you let us know, and I'll be there. But uh, I, I'm not going to give any answer until I see that. There's <laughs> shit old and it's beat. I'm waiting for the new stuff. The uh, you know vehicle I was going to uh, mention is the um, Isuzu Trooper, like the 80s, 89. Yeah, awesome, awesome vehicles, which was the same as the Dodge. Uh, Raider. Raider, yeah. And um, I, I think that was it. But that, that's another cool under-the-radar type off-road vehicle that you could probably buy right now. And start something pretty cool. Uh, I get a I get a thing for boxy trucks. I love and boxy cars. I love the whole boxy. I love the the aquarium style. You know, viewing area where you can see out no matter which way you turn your head. And uh, I had the four door trooper back when I lived in Indianapolis. You know, in those winters and stuff, and it was great. And it was just I love those old trucks. The and in fact we're you know my oldest is thirteen and my plan is. We're going to do it either this year or next year. I want to buy an old Cherokee, like a Cherokee Sport, like a two-door, and strip it down and turn it into a reliable yet semi-off-road fun vehicle that he can have. And he and I are going to work on it. So when he turns 16, that'll be his car. So and, uh, my boss has one for sale. <laughs> I told him that I thought... Uh, like a 95 it's not, the, it's not the wrong price, but it's not the right price for me. He has a long arm, posi rear end, limited slip front, I think it was, coilovers in the front and rear, limited slip yoke, four or six inch lift, gets three and a half inches of flex in the front, and et cetera. He wants 4,500. And I said, look, <laughs> I'm still paying you for the freaking Volkswagen Jetta. I said, but I got to be honest. In my opinion, I'm not looking for a uh, $4,500 Jeep all done up and whatever. And he's got these BF Goodrich mud terrains and everything on it. I said, look, I'm not looking for that. If I if I was looking for a Jeep, I'm looking for something that costs me $800 to $1,200. Bucks, something exactly. that's a crap that I can actually put a little bit of money into and have some fun with, create some videos with. His is pretty much already done and ready to go. And he wants to sell it. I'm like, that that's all well and good. That's not what I'm looking for, though. I'm also really hesitant to buy any, anything that somebody else lifted. I've had so many 
bad cases with you he, know, he barely drove that thing man he he no more than did all this work to it and it literally sat in the back of our shop for like five years it's sitting there yeah. i told him oh. i said look there's there's some there's problems what if the gaskets deteriorated what if this what if that what if the, I, I got so many questions i'm like i can't see spending forty five hundred dollars on something that that sat for five to six years i can't yeah it's but you know so I'm keeping my eye out but I'm I'm open to other stuff. There's a guy up here who's got I I got to do a video. He's got a junkyard on the west side of town. He's but but he's he's a hoarder. So you only get into it if you know him and if he likes you. Right. And he's got a ton of old uh, old Fords. He won't sell any of those. But he's got a bunch of international harvesters also. The old and uh, the oh, old. Uh, great. Yeah. And it's weird because I figured up here in Montana, winters, everything would be rusted and gone. Apparently what happens is winter comes on so hard, so fast, it just locks things in ice. They sit over the winter, then the, the spring thaw comes fast and hard, and then everything dries out. And there's surface rust, sure, but nothing deep. I went through it helping a, a buddy uh, change out a, a wheel on, on his van. And we went down there, went through the stuff. And, man, I could have sat there all day going through all that stuff. But, I, you know, so – Maybe we might go the route of the old international. You know, I like the old scouts. They had the the pickups yeah. as well. So they, well, they, uh, they, had, they had kind of like a suburban. They had like a a Bronco type SUV, but also like a suburban type, right? The travel all. Yes. Yeah, that was that's a great. If you can get one of those in decent condition, man, that's a great thing to fix up. Um, uh, text message me, guys, if you want to. Uh, I'm gonna go to bed. I have to work tomorrow. I know, unfortunate. I don't want to cut it short, but uh, I do have to work tomorrow. Not something I typically do on a Friday night, but uh, I I gotta go, man. I I do. Gotta go, gotta go. I should probably but, go. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out. I loved hanging out with you and the bear. You guys are awesome. I love both your channels. I watch you guys all the time. Guys, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to both. Also, hit the thumbs up. Come on now. You know, it's free. It's there. It takes you all of two seconds. You barely even notice it. Hit the thumbs up. I mean, it's like you go to the restroom. Just click it. It's free. It's right there. It doesn't cost you a penny. But anyway, thank you for having me on board. I appreciate it. See you guys next time. Thanks Cheers. Us, and deuces. Deuces. Ah, uh, and Barry. Right on, Gotta go also. Yeah. I um, appreciate you coming on. I really do. Uh, I think what you're doing with the community is awesome. The uh, the support you show. Um, and actually, I'll be honest with you. I forget how long ago. It was a couple months ago, maybe. You made me a moderator on your channel, and it made me uh, <laughs> take it more seriously. Like in the live chats, like I can't just comment, but I gotta go through everything. But I, I really enjoy doing that. Oh, uh, we appreciate, it, man. Uh, and you know what? It's you know, making somebody a moderator is kind of something we do just to honor the people who've been around for a long time and who, uh, you know, understand the community. And, you know, I, I don't want you to feel like you're you're burdened or anything with it. But no, no, you know. no. It, it just like I didn't I didn't expect it, I guess, was was, was the thing. <laughs> well, no worries, man. Well, anyway, you all take care. And as always, man, shine on. Thank you, Bear.